Intermittent fasting or fasting in general. Terrible way to lose body fat. Look, for most of you want to lose weight, do not use fasting as a way to do so. Back in the day, we used to call that eating disorder. It doesn't work well long term. Now, here is what fasting is good for. Detaching your addictions or attachments to food. So if you rush to food for anxiety, depression, or because you're bored, sometimes fasting can help with that. It can help you break the chains. But when it comes to fat loss, there's much better, more sustainable ways to do so. How many people are you think are going to get pissed off with that one? Yeah, well, you know, we still... We- yeah, yeah, so we beat this to death a while, you know, ago, a while yeah. back, but it's been a while. Did something? Did you see something recently? Or is it like it's still of, a thing? Yeah, people yeah. still talk about it as a way to to lose weight. Um, I mean, God, when we were trainers, people we used to call that skipping meals or you're not eating enough, and not and fasting was someone who's trying to do it to lose a lot of weight. Um, I mean, it could definitely work in the sense that it makes you eat less, but what ends up happening is you really push towards the relationship of on off. And so it tends to look like starve, binge, starve, binge. Mm -hmm. And that's not a great sustainable um, relationship with food. It just, in my experience with fasting and weight loss with people that I've worked with, it typically turns out not so great. Um, The only times fasting has been a great thing for people is when I've worked with people who are afraid to skip a meal because they're going to lose muscle or so they have to eat every two hours or something like that. And in which case fasting is great because it helps them kind of break those addictions or attachments. Uh, so it's more of like a, I don't know, like a better It's term. very insightful and introspective. Yes. And I, that's the biggest benefit I've noticed and my clients that have not abused it have noticed. Um, but yeah, it's still, it, it's still out there. I mean, I've, I just talked to one of my friends who uh, I had to convince that um, it was probably a good idea for them to, to probably include breakfast and, you know, maybe like try more protein in the morning and like, let's, let's work on that in terms of like regulating blood sugar and all that, instead of just like cutting a, a whole meal out. And then his whole day was like focused on how much you could cram within this window of a few hours. And so it just became an obsession to where I, I just, I don't think people realize like the, the kind of strength and pull, um, you know, that leads towards. Well, I mean, for thousands of years, fasting has been uh, used in all, most all religions for detaching from worldly things. Yes. And so the problem is food is not one of those things that you're supposed to go without. And so utilizing it as a tool to go without food and, uh, you know, just to lose body fat uh, uh, for vanity reasons or potentially even health reasons. Let's say if you're morbidly obese and you lose weight, it's just not a winning strategy uh, it took me a while to figure that out. I remember when it was starting to get really popular. I, I like many things. Um, I love to either one, try it out myself, apply it to clients, and then and then get feedback. I found it the most useful for my uh, bodybuilding community. Yes, exactly. The, and what I found was uh, they suffered for this, from the same uh, you know, anxiety around food as I did, which is this idea of, oh my God, if I miss my meal, if I miss my protein bar, I'm going to lose muscle. I'm already shrinking. Yeah. And, and that fear of missing a meal and, uh, losing muscle. And, and there's a part of that, uh, because of your depleted and, and lower calorie, lower carbohydrate, uh, that gives you this, this feedback of, oh, is that, that it's gotta be happening. I looked at myself, Two days ago before I fasted and I looked, my muscles looked all bigger and filled out. Now, two days later, it looks like I I lost five pounds of muscle, but all that is, is it's just not, they're not filled out. And so a lot of bodybuilders, bikini athletes struggle with that mental hurdle of allowing yourself to be okay with not eating for a couple meals or a day. And so I found it best with using with those clients to teach them that, Hey, you're, you're okay. You're not going to lose. Yeah. There's also, there are some medical, uh, applications, uh, as well. Always exceptions to the rule. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So like you have gut inflammation, fasting could be a good, uh, tool. There's been studies to show that fasting or something close or mimicking fasting, uh, can be, can be an adjuvant, uh, you know, therapy to chemotherapy Chemotherapy, for cancer. Um, uh, I like fasting for the people you said, Adam. And then the other people would be like, people have a really bad relationship with food where they reach for it when they're stressed or depressed or anxious. Mm. And and uh, and then we've identified as time of day that this happens, like after work or whatever. 
Then I'll have them fast during that. So they have to deal with what they're feeling mm -hmm. and, uh, and then learn how to deal with it and manage it without using food as a drug right. essentially. But for fat loss, terrible idea. It's not a sustainable approach. No. Uh, it, all, it, it typically leads to the restrict binge uh, behavior. Um, it's just not a good strategy. I mean, it, and I, you know, it's just it, in people who've gone through this process will tell you that happened to them. Now, what's going to happen is we're going to get negative comments from people who just started using it. Well, the get yeah, like that'll happen with any right diet away. that we talk about. Yeah. You know? I don't know how many times we get that. Oh, it's working for me for fat, for fat loss. Working you know? means forever. Right. Not I lost yeah. weight, you know, yeah. the last three months or something yeah. like that. Like, okay, well, let's stay with it and see what happens. Um, yeah. I, it's a great, it's a great tool for a lot of different things. I just think it's abused in our space for, uh, one of the worst ways to use it, which is for fat loss. There's of course, a, the fitness you know, another great it. place to use it. Um, we just got off a, a, a great call recently with, uh, um, Dr. Cabral and, um, you know, who did a, a bunch of lab results on each of us. And we shared that with the audience that hasn't gone live yet. It'll go live later. Um, and on there, we find out some of our uh, food intolerances. And so he, here I'm about to start this kick where I'm going to uh, eliminate a bunch of these foods. One way to kickstart that or move in that direction right away would be to like fast for the next 24 yeah, hours. Because it essentially gives your, your gut and your immune system a break. Right. Is what ends up. So like that. cool strategy for that. So there's a lot of little places I can see application for it. I just think that 80 to 90% of what's made it popular in the space is as a fat loss tool. I think yeah. that's most of the marketing has been around that. Most people that peddle it and sell it attach supplements to it uh, or have uh, you know those reasons behind it. I think it's, um, and I don't think it's best to use that way. In my experience with my clients, we haven't had a long-term success utilizing it as a fat yeah. loss. Today's program giveaway, MAPS Anabolic Advanced. If you want to win, you got to do this. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. And if you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. Now, everyone else, MAPS Anabolic Advanced is 50% off right now. There's two days left. The sale ends in two days. So if you're interested, you should probably act now. Go click on the link at the top of the description below. That's how you get the 50% off the new program, MAPS Anabolic Advanced. All right, back to the show. Speaking of that food sensitivity test, I don't want to give away the spoilers because we all did them and then they came back and, you know, Dr. Cabral told us what foods we were sensitive to. And I wasn't really surprised by mine, uh, but boy, you, you both, you guys got some really bad news. Yeah. The good news is, the good news is Real you bad. both, you can both continue to eat creatures of habit. Yeah, There's nothing in there. No. That is that on the list. You're the still good. Of, okay. Yeah. Thankfully. I know it's like, it's, it's very slim right now, yeah. but again, this is, this is just a, a good it's good insights, a good challenge. It's good to know. So that way I can work actively in that direction. And then, because there's a way you can heal and repair your gut. It's not like it's a death sentence, you know, from yeah. all these foods. It's like, it's really, it's just like, uh, this hasn't been benefiting you. And it's like, deep down, you kind of know that. But also, you just need an outside opinion sometimes, which is kind of rough. But yeah, there are still some options out there that, uh, you know, are are on on the list of like okay well i guess i'm gonna lean a little bit more in that direction creatures of habit the, the yeah. their source of protein will actually do well for me yeah, yeah. oatmeal I, for breakfast oatmeal for lunch and oatmeal for dinner for <laughs> <boy>. <laughs> I, I hey the the, the, the the just the look on justin's face when he got his i felt really bad i it, i really had a bad day yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna lie. i'm not even the guy that like ever gets depressed or like feels like all like ooh, yeah. you know and i just i just felt i felt it like you uh -huh. know just kind of creep it i'm like no you know and i just i sat downstairs for a minute there and i was just like it just kind of hit me a little bit and i was like oh i know ooh. i felt so bad bro. so i, I wasn't really surprised by any of mine although what i will say i was surprised at was that when I started to really pay attention to all of my choices today, I don't think I was accounting for all the times that I would allow those foods to creep into my diet. Because now you're really paying attention. Yeah, because yeah. because I'm, I'm because I'm being very vigilant about yeah. it now. And I was like, oh yeah, normally I would go grab that, or yeah. oh yeah, this would be a time when I do that. I'm like, oh, there's another. That's yeah. another one. Oh, that's another one. It's like, hmm, maybe it's been a while. Every meal for me. Yeah, yeah maybe it's been a while <laughs> since I've not allowed my gut to fully heal by just purely, or at least start the healing process 
by avoiding these things that my body's intolerant to. So I'm I'm excited. I'm excited. I know Cabral said give it 21 days. I'm gonna give it at least a month. Is what I'm gonna do. Just just and I've already start started yesterday. So I'll keep everybody posted on my. I mean I'm I'm for me selfishly it's about my psoriasis. I want to get to the bottom yeah. of that. I have a a, a, a sneaky feeling that this is not going to completely solve it, that I'm going to have something else that I'm also going to have to probably. Well, probably the root cause of why you've got the food intolerances is what you'll have to eventually treat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I remember, you know, cause this is, this is all old hat for me. I mean, I've, I, I deal on and off with gut issues for, it's been now, gosh, it's been 14 years. And uh, that there was a, a period there. It was really intense. And I remember when I got my first food sensitivity test back and it was everything I liked Mm -hmm. everything I liked was on there. And I remember b looking at it and being in disbelief and then being like, I have to cut like all those things out. Like yeah. this sucks. Like, what am I going to do? And, Oh, this is terrible. Like gluten is a, is a good example. I, I know this now, but I didn't know then that gluten is in, in lots of things that you wouldn't expect. You expect bread and pasta. Okay. Do you know how many barbecue sauces and yeah. marinades and shit like that? They put yeah. gluten into to thickening it up. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous. And I remember at the time I was eating these chicken breasts I was buying that were the, in these marinades. And the person I was working with says, did you check to see if there's gluten? I'm like, gluten, it's not, there's no bread. She goes, read the, read the back. And I looked at it I'm like, what the hell? Oh, there's yeah. gluten in this? Yeah. You get in there all the time. Dairy's another one. Yeah, dairy's another one. That's what I'm going Dairy through. is not just in cheese and in milk. Yeah. Potato chips. You could buy potato chips that are like barbecue. It's not even like a sour cream and onion or whatever. Read the back. Dairy. Salami. Salami. This one really pissed me off. There was, I, I love, obviously, you know, I like salami. It's delicious. It's a, you know, I'm Italian, something that we eat for, you know, those deli meats or whatever. And I remember I used to buy these packets of salami and I really liked them. And then I did that test. That and has I dairy in it? Some d salami includes non-fat dry milk in the process. I didn't know that. <laughs> it's it's annoying. It's so frustrating and annoying because I would eat it and be like, why don't I feel good? Salami. I should be able to eat this. And then I'm like, let me look at the back. And I look at it, I'm like, non-fat dry milk? Yeah, yeah. Why the hell are they putting that in salami? Yeah. So, yeah, it's one of those things. You just become hyper aware of all the crap that's in all of our food. We should stuff. highlight that Doug came in first place. He Thank did. Doug has, Doug has the healthiest gut. Yep, yep. Did, um, what, what was the one food for you? Because it was a miso. one. That's right. Oh, it it's so weird. Soup. Yeah. Miso, do you do a lot of miso I soup? I don't, actually. I, mm. I did have some last weekend, but that's very rare. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So it must be uh, m m mimicking something else, or obviously it's been long standing. You just didn't know it. Yeah. Right. No. But idea. that means you have a sealed gut. You don't have any any hyperpermeability or any um, gaps in your gut, which is cool because you always you did so bad on the stress test that stress often will do that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think everybody's won Open one and, and lost one. Right. Everybody. Which one were you the worst at? I actually don't think I was the worst at anything. You're second. Like working out, I'm like in the middle of the row of everything. Mm -hmm. say, not the best at anything, not the worst at anything. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, I did I've got so highs late. and lows. I've so done well on everything that got one. I, was I don't think there was anything. I, well, there was one I, I think I did really well. I don't remember what it was, but uh, so far, yeah. You no. did really well on one of them? Yeah, one of the tests, I think I, I got good feedback. I, don't, I think it might have been the stress one that I did really good on that one. I don't remember. I don't think it was a stress one. I think so. Really? It might yeah. have been. I think it was. Really? Yeah, yeah. 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 No, oh, I, wow. I think, yeah. Which again, I would I would guess that I don't have I don't have a lot of stress. I do pretty good about I think balance and stuff with that. Yeah, pretty good you don't ever act stressed out. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's why. A grumpy, hey, maybe a grumpy and stressed out is totally different. Oh my bad. <laughs> you know what? You release it. He releases he it. That's yeah, exactly hold it right. right. I don't hold it in. No, no. You know you don't hold it in. You hand it. You give it to us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Here, guys. Yeah. Oh, fuck. This shit off my no, I'm just kidding. I'm totally joking. <laughs> hey, uh, did you guys hear about the airs? To the Bud Light brand, like the founders, the family. So the family that founded it. No, I listened. Yeah, I listened to an interview that actually the one of the sons that is that is. They were like so appalled. Yeah, at he that said whole they, advertising campaign. Yeah, he said that our our my my dad would have rolled over in his grave. And they're and like, we'll buy the brand back and bring it back. I, you know what? I think that'd be the only thing that would save the brand. Oh, I didn't hear that. Oh, so yeah. they sold it off. Well, it's publicly traded. Oh, it's publicly traded. Yeah, yeah. right. They're, so, they're not primary owners. Mean, oh, they're see, not main. So is that what they're saying? That they private? would actually buy it they back? They did a tweet or a post about it. Wow, that would and be say it. we would buy it back and we would bring back America's beer. I think that would be the only thing that would say that it. If I was on the board of directors, that would be the move. I would be talking to the heirs because think about the story. 
the originators. We made this. We're the ones that created this. This is America's beer. We hate the direction it went. That's why we came back and bought it. I feel like that would bring back a lot of, potentially bring back a lot of their old, you know, consumers or whatever to save the brand. Yeah, I mean. Because that brand is done. They, 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 they they're dead. They killed themselves. So? I was just going to say the I don't numbers think, are shit. Well, how I mean, many billions did they lose? It was, they're still losing. It was pretty appalling how well, quickly I mean, they lost. But that. I mean, when when you have billions to start with, losing billions is not like the. I well, mean, no, they still make money, but uh, they went yeah, from they the still, number one beer. Well, I mean, okay, I mean, yeah, no one's no one's arguing that, but I'm saying like, are the, I don't think they're done. I mean, I think Anheuser Busch owns all kinds of different. Well, lines no, of I beer. think that that brand with an Anheuser Busch yeah. oh, is right. basically. In, in 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 the context of what they've been, yeah, they'll still done. be survive. Uh, Anheuser Busch will survive. Off. They have a bunch of different yeah. uh, brand beers that they can like ban- like bank on those ones too. And even yeah. a lot of the uh, what was a lot of like it's not Corona, it's like Corona, and it's also Dos Equis and like Maybe. some other beers yeah. that are like in that category. I, I mean, I, I think that I think that when you get a, in a predicament that they're in right now, like when you have like a, a company this large, a brand this large. You forecast uh, what you should be able to sell. You have all these yeah. deals. You have tons of employees. You have lots of shipping stuff involved. So you take this massive, you know, multi-billion-dollar hit, let's say, and um, it, that's enough to cripple that part of the brand. That's enough to potentially lose all kinds of employees. But I don't even know if it's enough to actually completely lose a brand. I mean, you could just shrink dramatically. Mm. I don't think it I don't think it goes from like, oh, you made a really bad advertising decision, you Down lost to a beer. microbrew kind of stuff. I mean, I, I mean, I don't even know that, right? Like I it's hard to say. What do you got, Doug, for me? So Anheuser Busch uh said its revenues in the United States last quarter fell more than 10% from the year earlier. That's all all brands, right? Yeah, Under okay. the Anheuser So that's cuz Bud Light Bush. was one of their major brands. Yeah. And yeah, primarily due to the decline of Bud Light Operating profit at the U.S. unit dropped nearly thirty percent. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. So again, I mean, I'm still searching for will that will that destroy the brand? I don't. I don't. I think, seriously doubt that. Yeah, I seriously doubt that too. I think. Uh, but, well, there, I mean, what, what's unfortunate would happen is maybe a hundred employees get laid off, and you know, let's say you're in ten thousand stores, you're now in five hundred stores. Like, I mean. I, well, they're a big brand. They have a lot of money still. Anheuser Busch obviously has a lot of money. They can they can be really smart with the marketing campaign and find a way to uh, you know bring them back. Right? We've seen brands like this do this before, where they were crap. Yeah, well, didn't change. Didn't, image. Mean, didn't Gillette re, uh, repivot after their dumb their their little yeah? But Gillette snafu. didn't didn't get they didn't do as what. Bud Light did. I mean, Bud Light was like the worst example of all of those. I know Gillette did it. They messed up too, but this one, whew, you know, yeah. they really went hard. Yeah, and they doubled and tripled down on it and stuff. So, I mean, it'd be interesting. I'm, I'm curious to see what they do. And I mean, I, I like watching things like this just just, just purely out of like- Yeah, you know, there's how- part of Americans that want a comeback story. That's right. And that's like- that bring, You've seen think- brands get resurrected that have died over the years mm-hmm. too. So I'm not, I'm not discounting that at all. I just think they got a pretty massive uphill- uh, battle to, to get through the, the, the marketing has to be has to resonate in a way that will just I I don't know I don't know what that looks like it's got to be like insanely patriotic somehow exactly yeah. I think if the heirs came back and bought it or became the spokespeople that they would be able to sell that story right what did yeah they say there Gillette still down huh yeah it's down oh, wow. every year they never, they never fully recovered wow huh? yeah. look at that huh well. Whatever. I mean that to me because Gillette. W- w- what does Gillette have besides razors? Are they? Do they have a bunch shaving of shaving cream? Yeah, shaving cream, sh- shaving cream and stuff. Yeah, I don't know if they have their. Uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like Anheuser Busch is way more insulated and protected by a uh, uh, like a mistake like that than Gillette. Gillette probably is like yeah, that's their, their, their that's entire their entire thing. that's their entire brand. That'd be a good, yeah, Bud Light just was by itself. Like that, they'd be. In a I mean, I, I I mean, so let's let's play around with this idea that you have right of like coming. I mean, you could even like right off the brand and go like full in that direction. Like yeah. a rainbow color, I Bud Light. Honestly, go I full in on that go, direction yeah. and then start a new lineup that is like the ultra opposite right. patriotic yeah. right, right. alpha every like it's just, just sparkly and, rainbow. You yeah, know, like, like go all in all on that. In. Like hey yeah, reducing Bud Hay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> right. Bud I mean, Spritzer. You know I mean <laughs> Anheuser Busch has got enough power, Tiny capital, Bud, Bud. network to potentially do that is like well, didn't they do that? What was that soda that we were talking about a while ago? That uh, was a tab that event that uh, there was a Diet Coke owned them. 
Because mm. they were the first Diet Cola, and then they bought them and then slowly took their sales type of deal. Oh, that, was it Tab? I think Tab, yeah. Yeah, I think it was Tab. Ta yeah, that was the – because they found their demographic was all women that were not trying to get all the calories from the yeah. Coke, right? Yeah. And they yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I mean it wouldn't be – that wouldn't be a bad strategy either is to just – Right off Bud Light now is going to be marketed specifically in that direction. Mm -hmm. Go all in on it and yeah. then start up a, a another line. And I mean, how many, I bet you so many people drink beer at the bar. I mean, we know this. Yeah. We talked to the bartender when, when I had this Bud conversation Light, with it's them. a beer that, that identifies as a normal beer. No, we talked to the bartender about, and I was asking him about sales and stuff like that. And, you know, one of the things he said is like, yeah, obviously people are like uh, not buying Bud Light, but then they buy Corona or they buy another sure. Anheuser-Busch line. It's not very few, the, the average buyer and consumer who is they don't even, go that far. Yeah, who's even mad about Bud Light isn't even go far enough to be like, how do I really hurt this company? They just go like, I'm not going to drink a Bud Light because yeah. I don't want people to yeah. think I am. <laughs> so they, they just do that, yeah. but then they still give they the company money. They just see the money. label and they're like, ah. So yeah. I, you could easily fool the average consumer by going all in on Bud Light and staying in that direction. But still, go if rainbow you're a company, cans, everything. But and, also, think about this yeah. way, Adam. You're a big, do it. You're a big company like Anheuser-Busch, right? Bud Light's one of your major brands. Still going to hurt you. Because you have so much money and investment and employees, and yeah, that all part, in that one segment. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because you've so already still gonna get hurt. you've already forecast that for the year. Yeah. So you've hired, you've got shipping yeah, deals. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, it definitely, but it won't kill them. You know, no. it's funny. It reminds me of this is like an old SNL sketch with. Uh, Schlitz gay beer. Remember that one? What? That's no. what it reminds me of. No, no. Yeah, Adam Sandler and uh, uh, what's his name? Chris Farley. And they were like at this pool. And it was like a typical beer commercial, but it was like, they're like, whoa, like all these dudes in, in like thongs and stuff. It was hilarious. But then it's like, this is real life now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's great. Hey, speaking of brands and stuff, dude, I was reading, so Roblox, right? One of the most popular games in the world. Crazy how popular it is. You make. keep, I keep reading articles about, this is a terrible place to allow your kids to go. Yeah, because they, they're building all these like communities within it and think Weird things. Weird shit. Yeah. I was just reading an article and it was all confirmed. The article, the authors confirmed it, that there are rooms that you could go in. And by the way, there's rooms in, in like mini games within Roblox apparently that are labeled all ages, right? All ages are welcome. And that you go in there and you can... I'm sure it's not a predator's den. Yeah, exactly. You could cook and eat people. There's one. Where you actually, Yeah. Like you, you cook and eat like feet and stuff like that. There's another one where it's like a public bathroom. You can use the bathroom, but oh then other God. people can watch you or they can come in behind you and simulate sex. So this woman writes about it because she's like, I spent five hours playing Roblox and here's all the different rooms that I found that are all ages. I'm like, wow, oh dude. It's too, you know what well, it is? It's, it's too big to monitor. That, well, dude. yeah, and it's was... it's all open, right? So uh, so isn't if I can't like the kids create their own code? Isn't that how the how Roblox works? I have no idea. I think mm -hmm. that's how it works, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, you can't police that. If you open like you do a whole open AI. Wait, how do you monitor or, that? They you allow them to create their own rooms and spaces and if you got tens of thousands like you can't, you can't possibly keep up. No, Man. no, no. That's great. And I, I, it is it's definitely that's alarming. It definitely a predator. It attracts predators. I was talking to my it's nephew. Called Schmitz Gay Beer. That's what it's called. Yeah, Schlitz. Schmitz. No, Schmitz. Oh, Schmitz. Schmitz. Uh, Schmitz. Schmitz. I like what you said. Oh, well, that sounds better. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. No, I was uh, hoping it was Schmitz. Yeah, I was talking to my nephew about this. He has a friend online. He's like, "Oh, he's my best friend. I've never met him," and he's telling me about him. And I said, "You know, there's a lot of weirdos out there that pose as kids." And they talk to you in developer relationships. He referred to somebody as a best friend who he's never. He's like met. one of my one of my best friends. He said, right? He's a young, he's a little guy. Yeah. And I said, you know, there's a lot of people on there that will pretend. And he's like, I've been talking to him for like a year. I said, they will talk to you for years. For years, they'll play this game and they'll talk to other kids until they earn your trust, and then you go visit them or you give them your address or whatever. That's the game. The game is not. They talk to you once and then they they they'll be your friend forever for a yeah, long time. Remember the the. The documentary that went crazy viral, it's still, still I think, a popular show, Catfish. I mean, that's what oh, that yeah, was all yeah. about. You yeah. Watch that. I mean, these people, they they keep this thing going on for, I mean, they get off on that. Yeah. They get off on the idea that they are fooling somebody, yeah. and so it's a thrill for them. So 
playing that character and pretending like they're someone they're not they'll 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 play that for years yeah. bro i miss yeah. nintendo dude i'm just gonna be honest with you guys. i brought it back dude. yeah i, I brought I, it back we i play. took yeah because my youngest he's all into like the roblox stuff and I, I started to see a lot of that because it's like it's so immersive that they're just going all these different rooms and and like you know justifying because their friends are in there and so I'm, I'm talking to my friend and I'm like, no, let's get a switch and let's stick with like, you know, the Mario and like uh, things that I'm familiar with. And, and also I could pull it away and even just getting them. And I remember you brought this up too. It's like, there's such a different response when you take away a game that's like a console game Bro. versus a iPad or a, yeah. a phone. It's, it's, it's insane. It's the difference. Crazy different. We we play Nintendo almost every day right now. That's kind of a routine right now. We we go downstairs. We do our normal kind of playing around. And he's normally asks me, "Daddy, daddy, can we go play Nintendo?" Okay, so we go upstairs. He's still at an age where he he can't he can't really feel it. So he he sits in my lap and we we play and we play. You have another thing yet? Where you give him the controller that's not plugged in? <laughs> he, so he thinks he's, he's not even interested in that. Oh, like okay. he just wants to watch me do it. He uh, wants to sit in my lap. He jump, wants to, they jump. Their when arms I get the <laughs> when I get the fire flower, he wants to push the B button and do the the fire the fireballs. That's all he wants to do, and just watch watch me play. But what is so easy? I mean, I could literally I go okay, we're gonna play for thirty minutes and together, and then he's sitting in my lap playing, and then as soon as it's over, it's over, and it's like okay, that's it. Our last guy, we died. Okay, let's go. Like no qualms about it whatsoever. When I would let him play that Angry Birds game yeah. on the yeah. iPad, it was you could see a difference in his behavior. You could see how hard it was to pull him from it. He would wake up asking about it, and I was like, "Damn!" And I'm, dude, we didn't even allow that in for very long. I mean, it yeah. was like literally like that. I saw a difference, and it was tough to pull it out. And then we could get rid of it, and then now it's like a it's huge difference. Did you dude. when you guys were kids? You guys beat Mario, right? You guys all beat the game oh, Mario. Yeah. No. Yeah, now, yeah. did you beat Mario? Like everybody beat Mario, where you, I don't know what it is. I think it's level three. You, you warp. You warp to the higher level type See, of deal. See, I was that or did you play that would get everything in, on, in that level. I had to gather all the things before I would pass. Wait, wait. Did you, did you beat Mario by going through every level? Every level. Wow. Did you do the- And then I went back and warped. I was like, oh, this is way better. Did you do the the, the trick where you jump on the, the turtle on the stairs and get the like uh, a ton the, of lives? The, yeah, exactly. Okay, well, then you yeah, did yeah. cheat a little bit. So. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even remember. I learned that later. That was from Nintendo Power. Yes. Like, it, it, so yeah, I'm, I'm playing stuff. with him right now, again, for the first time, right? And so I'm going through this yeah. process. And like, I don't remember all those hacks. I know they're there, right? Like, I'm like, I remember I'm playing with him. And I'm like, there's like a free life somewhere. I think it's video. Like, I think, somewhere I think around you, like here. squad on some of uh, the two. Room. No, no, no. It's it's. I think it's level two. There's a tube. You go down, and then you jump. I think to the top and run across the top, and then yeah, you, no, you end up with the these warp. Yeah. Warps. Yeah, yeah, that warps you to just like, like the seven level. or something. Yeah, like that. to like that. But I mean, you still got to go through all the way through each one of those worlds. Um, but yeah, that that one. That's so. That's level two. That's the all blue level. It's level two. You okay. break into the bricks at the top. You yeah. jump and then you run. That's all the way what across. it is. Yeah, yeah. So, so you got to get the extra life first, and then you go. Yeah, I have done that. Right. Okay. So I, I have done that. But that you still got to play a lot of the game. There's you still do. It's yeah. still hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you guys remember Game Genie? Do you guys ever get a yeah, Game Genie? Yeah, yeah. We had Game Genie. But, do you ever used to make up your own codes and just see what that? it did? Oh, because you, you have a whole book of like the codes when you buy it. Right? Yeah. And so it would give you very specific things that would happen. Like you would turn in, you'd have like the raccoon suit. Yeah. Or you'd yeah, have yeah. whatever. Right. <laughs> and so we would just start scrambling our own codes in there. And oh, it, that's right. You could just make shit up. Yeah. I remember. And we would get like the weirdest glitches and we'd get like, I, I one time I got like a half, like, I think it was like a frog head of Mario and then the rest of it was like normal. And then there was like some weird uh, background difference that was like all like scrambled. It was fun. Dude, dude. at the mall, they sold, this was a knockoff uh, Nintendo. I think I might've told you guys about this. It was a knockoff Nintendo, right? So it looks like Nintendo, the original one. Yeah. And it came with, they advertised like 300 games was already on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was like made in China. It was definitely bootleg bullshit. Whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it cost me like 50 bucks. I'm like, yeah. oh, this is cool. So I bought it and I brought it home a while ago. It was when my older kids were little and we were playing it. And it had all the traditional games on there. Yeah. And then there were games that I'd never heard of. Yeah. And some of the games like were- adult games. There was a game called Dickland. <laughs> and I swear to God. And the whole level was made of little penises <laughs> throughout the whole level. And my daughter found it. Oh my God. Papa, look at this. It's a, I'm like, oh. <laughs> Throw it away, dude. <laughs> Throw it away. I know. How do I 
explain you know, this. this. The worst Nintendo invention ever was the body glove. What a what a! Oh, I never tried. It never it. worked. It was oh, terrible. Bro, it was terrible. It was crap. I owned it. I owned all the gimmick, all the toys they had. Right. It was the, the first different. attempt at Didn't VR. Didn't they have like a little robot? No, you had to, no, too. you had to put your whole hand. And there's a, in there's it. a controller on there, and all the buttons were on here, and it had a cord still gleaming. The to commercial it. made oh, it look sick oh, as hell. Oh yeah, though. the commercial made it's you like think the Thanos it was, glove made you feel like you were going to be feel like it was you're really crap. boxing, but it was like nothing. So was a stupid running pad. I know some people like that. It was dumb. Yeah, nobody so, ran on. Everybody used their hands. Yeah, yeah, no. It, it, some uh, of those things. That, I mean, it's so crazy to think where it was, and then how. And then I think of how we got introduced to Oculus not that long ago, and like how real the boxing is compared. To, like, go back to Body Glove, Mike Tyson. Sucked. Yeah, and compare. By that the way, to with Oculus. the Body Glove, you had to put these like sensors over your TV. Yeah. But we owned. Oh, the, wow. Do you guys remember the old school TV? They existed in the seventies and eighties. It was like a brown cabinet looking yes, thing. Yeah, the it was like more, is, more cabinet than it was. Yeah, the, the, the TV the tube tube was, was like big. this big. Yeah, yeah there's like five buttons. Or Magnavox, whatever. bro. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's yes. Like big Magnavox. Yes. Yeah, there's the body glove right there. Oh it looks God. cool as hell. Oh, I never glove. tried that. Power, power, power glove. Never body glove that. is a surfing company. Uh, yeah. Yeah, power glove. Oh, my God. Doug, what video games did you play when you were a kid? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have any. No, Pong. The first, Pong, yeah, Pong was the first one. I Pong. remember when that came out. Yeah, that was, yeah, that that was later. It came like, out when we were kids, though. Too. That's, the, that's the hilarious well, part. Well, it was like late seventies. Late seventies was Atari. Atari no. was late seventies. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was seventy eight, okay. seventy eight ish. Was, was it when Pong came? No, no, not seventy eight. Because seventy. No, no, Apple two E was. I no, Atari was. I want to say eighty one. I think Pong was a late seventies. No, 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 no. Really? I had. I remember it being in the eighties. Look, look, look when, just don't look when, Pong, look when Atari <laughs> came Beer up. Pong came up. Yeah, because. When did Pong for the house? No, no, no. For the house. Oh, for the yeah, house. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the yeah. yeah. When did Pong. Just do Pong Atari. Atari. Just do Atari. Okay. Atari, just do Atari. something All thousand. right, Adam. No, no, no. <laughs> don't put Pong Atari. Atari's Atari. <laughs> okay. So what do you want? Just Atari. Oh, wow. For your home TV, 1972. Now to just do Atari. Okay. Yeah, yeah. just do Atari. Yeah, Let's just see what that. Atari. It was the Atari 2600, 2600. Or 2400. Yeah, 1972. Right. It was founded. Okay, wait. The company quickly rolled out other arcade games in 1977 to introduce Atari Video Computer System. Wow. That's Adam. Good. I should have oh, never challenged the gamer. One, I was one year off. He's the, he's the gamer. He knows. Oh, man. They, all, they used to have the, the, that was I, the played first on, I played. My first one was on floppy disk. Oh, yeah. So you had like you had the Atari games that, but they were played on wow. like a floppy disk. You guys could afford like, that? like Frogger. <laughs> <and those. laughs> <Hold on a laughs> second. You guys could. You know how expensive video games were back then. <laughs> That's we, expensive. We missed our mortgage. Bro, so. we, had, we had ponies, ponies <laughs> in, in Atari. Uh, that, that same house, bro, got repoed. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I bro, close on. Do you so, know? How, hey, listen. <laughs> do you know how do, people don't realize these sh things were so expensive back then, <laughs> bro? We also had a, a we had a rainbow vac vacuum. I told you. Oh yeah, was like wow. like. Two three thousand dollars. It costs more than the whole carpet in the house. Dude. <laughs> Why do we have carpet, Mom? Uh, I remember some even... house that had the the baller house that had those like projectors. The screen yeah. that was like, and then you'd have these huge laser discs before even yes. DVDs came out. Yes, yeah. I was when, like, man, when you're I, rich. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Remember that episode we did? Where we told people not to play video games. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hey, we went down a hey, rabbit hole. That was the price food. back then. $189. Wow. Okay, hold on a second. That's, That's expensive, expensive for that. that. Put what, $189 in 1972. Adjusted for inflation. Uh, what is it worth in 2023? Because people need to understand this. Things were so, like the first Walkman was like 300 bucks back then. Yeah. Like, like can you imagine playing, <laughs> uh, paying 300 bucks for a freaking cassette player? No way. You know, and that yeah. was back then. Yeah. yeah. That's like yeah. $10 million. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What does it say there, Doug? Yeah, that's fine. God, 189. I didn't realize it was that expensive. Yeah, that's why you guys couldn't afford it. <laughs> yeah, we couldn't pay for it. All right, hey, it was 188. Our mortgage was like 500 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. $1,300. Wow. $1,300. Wow. It didn't even have a game. You had to buy the game separately. Yeah. Wow. That's pretty crazy. That yeah. is crazy. Yeah, that's wow. a good time. All right, you guys, you guys want to hear some interesting? No more uh, Roblox is the point of all. No, that. no more Roblox. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you guys want to hear some interesting uh, marriage divorce statistics that I looked up? Oh, let's hear it. Oh, so I saw the stat, uh, and I've heard this before, and it's true. I confirmed it. So we'll start with this one, which is whatever. What percentage of divorces are initiated by? by the wives and what percentage is are initiated by the husband 80 by the women 70 30 yeah, 80 by are, the yeah justin's on it it's like oh. 70 it's like 70 80 right so it's wow. right in between there women wow 30 percent uh or less men. i thought it was 80 20 
Yeah, I've heard statistics that say that yeah. are the ones that are closer to what Justin's saying. Yeah, yeah. So women tend to initiate uh, the divorces. Okay, so um, so knowing that, uh, lesbian versus gay marriage. What do you guys wow. think the difference is mm. with divorce? Do you think that they have a better oh, like do, or do, worse? Do gay men versus uh, uh, lesbian I women? And then, like versus, and then versus longer. hetero. That's, why, that's my oh, I Who's got the lowest divorce rate? Who oh, has the lowest? lowest? Yeah. Men, men, for sure. Yeah. Men, men with men. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. There, there, there's there's as close to or slightly lower than hetero couples. Lesbian couples divorce at twice twice the rate. Oh, Two times yeah, the time. I, mean, I, I, I know a few, there. and it's... The, <laughs> Yeah, I've been to just a couple. Every married man should just, be like, not surprised. Just arguing. <laughs> just, 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 just fights just, all the time. Just fights all Actually, the, all joking just, aside, just, all jo <laughs> stop. You fucking remember everything to <laughs> <it>. <laughs> everything. Oh, my God. No fair fighting. Wow. Yeah. Oh, my God. Wow. Recording each other. Actually, yeah. actually, this is terrible. This, this is the other part. I didn't know this. Their Dude, rate of domestic, yeah. yeah, the guys, we're doing great. guys would be like this. Hey, even if it's not working out, they're still homies. Just I am fucking my buddy, my other buddy. No, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, oh no. man, I get it. No, it's I just a it. bunch of avoidance. Yeah, well, That's what I mean. Avoid, like, like but we're still. You argue? I don't want to argue. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't whatever. want to fight. I'm just gonna bang my other yeah, buddy. Just keep doing what you're doing. I'll just do my thing over here. Just be like, we'll just hang out. Yeah, yeah. I'll just forget that you. We already bought this house together. We'll just figure it out. No, no. So check this out with domestic abuse. You know, physical abuse is twi is higher in lesbian I've relationships as well. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I think that goes line with the fighting, though, right? It just get. I, mean, if, I if think there, if there's an if it's it, the fighting is exponentially higher, that would also increase the potential of physical violence too. Uh, maybe, of I, course. I, I was of I was course. reading about this. I thought this was very interesting. Yeah, strange. And the speculations <laughs> range, but one of them was that uh, that the, the societally speaking, it's not as obviously not nearly as frowned upon when women hit each other men hitting each other there's a big big there's always that like men know this like we're big strong there's always that like well if we start fighting it's gonna get real someone's gonna get hurt really really bad whereas women have the perception that you know they're gonna it's not whatever you know i'll slap you slap yeah, me yeah. it's not gonna whatever you're not a guy you're not gonna you know it's it's not inappropriate or whatever but that's terrible did you high. did you see the yeah, speaking of crazy. guys fighting other guys did you see the the uh, 49er preseason game that I sent it. I think I sent it to all of us. Did I just send it to you? Oh, yeah, you sent it. Did you see me? that? No, oh man! I'll have the I'll have the YouTube guys like share the clip. This dude. That's first of all. By the way, too. I mean, if you get in a fight at a, at a sporting event already, you're already an asshole. Yeah. But if you fight you're talking about I, fans, yeah. Oh. If you fight in a preseason game, you're a real fucking loser. Like yeah. it's that's yeah. like. So it's a preseason game what of all the they're hell, fighting dude. over the game. I mean, I don't know what I don't know how the fight started, right? But they they were both 49er fans. I, bl and, I blame all the Raiders leaving. And one, and, and we, one we guy was obviously very fans. drunk, but dude, one dude just I mean, the drunk guy looks like he's antagonizing somebody or people and some big dude just Fucking, he just pummeled. crushed him. Oh, yeah. I mean, pum, pummel him. He I mean, got, the guy was uh, drunk, and he, you know, he was definitely like pestering everybody and like talking shit. So he kind of got <laughs> what was coming to him, but it's still, wow. it's just like, you know, there's kids right next to him, and oh, yeah. it's just like, you know, it's so embarrassing. That that's traumatizing for children yeah. to see grown men fight. That's yeah. a traumatizing thing for yeah, a kid. And the guy got I beat. would hate to do that in front of my kids. Even if I had it's, to, it's, I yeah. would feel very bad that my kids saw that side of me. Yeah, there's no, I think the only way that happened, I remember one time my dad got out, some, ever. had road rage and pulled out on some dude while I was in the car and was going to go fight. Fight. I had my stepfather was like super temper like that. And man, and I remember I was actually at that age. I might see here, I'm seventh grade or like that. Even then, I was terrified. Oh yeah, here it is, right here. Yeah, was, see him. That's not even the best. The, the other video, it was behind him. Yeah, I oh, have the man. other clip. Andrew, who's playing that? Is that Andrew or Doug? That one was way. Yeah, more. wait till I show you the other clip. I have the, the angle of the guy who's standing right next to the dude, but he just, I mean, he's got clean. Clock. When he gets up, watch when he gets up, dude. He's just, I mean, he's like smashed. What him. are some things? Uh, obviously, if somebody hits you. Or you really feel your life threatened. Let's take the family stuff out because that's obvious. But if you feel really threatened or you get hit, then it's very likely you're going to fight. Okay. What would someone, what other things could people do to you that don't There's involve nothing. physically you, touching nothing. you? Nothing. You couldn't, you couldn't so say, you couldn't on you? say, you could say stuff about my mother, my wife. You could say things all you want. What I'm if you got some spit on no you? No spit. 
Well, I mean, I've I been mean, in that's, a fight for that's that. That's a violent so. Yeah, that was before. Let's what be about honest. Now? You're a lot wiser now. Oh, I don't know if that would have I mean, that's that's physical to me. That's close. Yeah, right? yeah that's physical yeah. enough. It's like, like slapping you. you. That's yeah, chemical you, warfare. You, yeah. yeah. I mean, it is. No, at that point, some weird shit at that point uh, spitting on me or, or pushing me or hitting me is all in the same category, yeah. right? That's physical to me, right? Sure. Like you've you've You've, you've now, touched me. Yeah, you've touched me with your fucking saliva, which is just as bad. So. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah, and, and most importantly, even more than me, because even the, even me, I think by myself or in the right setting, I don't think I would even I would have been in enough fights and stuff now that like I wouldn't even want to even fight over that. Like I'd still probably try and turn the cheek. If I was with my my wife or my kid, and I felt afraid for them, of course. Or, uh, yeah, if you're protected, you don't even have to hit me. Different story. You don't even have to hit me. Of course, you you, you make me feel like this could be a threatening situation. Yeah, now you're, now you're trying to be, attack you. Yeah, you're trying to anticipate. Yeah, yeah. Be, so exactly. Okay. I don't want to wait to see what happens. Like yeah. I, to me, I think I would. That is more likely than being by myself, saying shit to me, doing. I mean, I've been at, at games before where. People have thrown beer at me before and done yeah. shit like that, and yeah. I didn't fight. You know, Who so. has it? I mean, that's yeah. yeah. yeah so, but I mean, that's I have a really good. Course. I'm I, I've so far I've had a really good um, like fight sense. You know, when you're somewhere and you see what's happening, you're like, let's go. Yeah, something's gonna happen right now, and I've done it a few times where I was right. Oh, I think you can yeah. feel that energy. Yeah, it's so, in the yeah. air. Yeah. Oh, I totally think you can feel, it. and I feel like you have to. There's a part of you. As a male, <laughs> you want to watch. What's well, no, that you want to be a, like that's it, the, the truth. That I, the younger version of me, like you, stuck around in that situation yeah. because you're you're an idiot. You know what I'm saying? You're looking for that. And when you get older and wiser, and you've been in enough situations like that, like I feel that I'm out. Like yeah. I, if I even get a, a sense, you that, realize everybody loses. You know, yeah. in that situation. Yeah, so, yeah no. And then out. you get to a place too where we're. I mean, when I was a, a teenage boy and <laughs> weighed a buck eighty, I, I'm not going to do that much damage. But I, I remember the first time that like that stuff like that's happened where. Katrina's made comments of like it, it, we're fe in fear that it was going to escalate, and I'm like, oh, you really were worried in the situation. She's like, I'm not worried about you. I'm like worried about what you would do. She, like, I'm worried about what would happen to that guy. Like, I, if that would happen, like, I went to uh, high school with a kid. He got in a normal fist fight. Normal fist fight. Hit the other kid. The other kid hit his head on the ground. Oh, right. Yes. Like got so here. like like yeah. like really bad yeah. injury, like brain damage type stuff. Kid so went to many jail. Stories like that. You know. So it's like, what's the best case scenario? You win and go to jail. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So it's not, nobody wins. Yeah. And you everybody. think you would want you, I mean, you think that would feel good to win the fight, but if you actually really hurt somebody like really, really bad, you're in trouble and it wasn't a life threatening situation. You think, Oh my God, I did that. Cause somebody totally. called me a name or made fun of somebody. Like, I mean, boy, stupid. yeah, really stupid. Dumb. It takes a lot of confidence to, to be able to walk. Yeah. Around. And that's the other thing too. When you get older and you've been around enough, like we talk about like UFC fighters, like I actually admire that so much more and think that's badass yeah like seeing a dude who i know you know would just, just mop the floor just somebody, mop yeah. the floor the guy and yeah. see him composed totally in that situation and allow yeah and that's like okay that's to me that's even that that shows a whole nother level of confidence and badassery totally. yeah. that you have the self-discipline to know you would just wipe the floor totally with this dude. all right i'm gonna change directions because i've done a few openings where i've talked a lot of openings where i talk about the benefits of creatine and so the messages I've gotten a lot of now, because I think we've made the case, right? Creatine, healthy supplement, pro longevity, obviously good for muscle building, obviously good for recovery, all you know, all that stuff. Um, but the question I keep getting is uh, not what kind of creatine. I think we've now established creatine monohydrate, all the other versions, wh who cares? doesn't matter. None of them have been shown to be better than good old uh, monohydrate. But the main question I'm getting now is, should I or can I take it with something else to enhance its absorption or mm -hmm. uh, how it works in the body. And the question, uh, the answer is yes, it's not a huge effect, but yes, there are things you can add to creatine that will improve its absorption. One of them is sugar, which I don't recommend. Uh, I think that's that, that's not worth the, you know, what is, what's that saying? It's not worth the squeeze or whatever. It's not worth the the Supplement the companies know this and have added that. Yeah, but, but, yeah. Cr but the other ones are sodium. And then lastly, uh, L-carnitine tartrate. So that's an amino acid, a form of an amino acid that with creatine has been shown to be slightly more effective than just plain old creatine itself. So people are like super um, into this and really like to maximize and push, you know, every little uh, piece of advantage that they could get. Uh, creatine with L-carnitine tartrate is a good combination. Take them at the same time. Is that what Mike's does? Yes, does Legion's that? Recharge. Is no. that's what it is? It's a powder, and it's creatine monohydrate with L-carnitine uh, tartrate that you take. And what it does is it it, it activates the mTOR pathway, 
and enhances absorption of creatine and makes it more effective. I mean, for the most part, you would say it's probably splitting hairs, right? It's a small percentage. Yeah. You know, so I'd say- But I mean, if you're somebody who's like, I'm willing to if spend- If you're into it- I'm, Yeah, willing to spend a couple extra bucks for something that has got research behind it to support- Yeah, so what you do is you take it post-workout because post-workout also enhances recovery. Now, here's the other side. Here are the other people that mm -hmm. may benefit. There are, there is a small percentage of people that are known as creatine non-responders. They seem to supplement with creatine and it doesn't seem to have the effects on them. These are the people I would say, try it post-workout, try it with L-carnitine uh, tartrate, try adding sodium and then see if that actually makes a difference for you. What do you think, what do you, what's your speculation on somebody who would be a quote unquote non-responder to creatine? Do you think that like, are they teasing out the fact that, that person could be just getting plenty of creatine through their It's unlikely diet? they're getting that much creatine from their diet. You'd have to eat a lot of, of red meat. I don't yeah. know. That's a good question. I know some people get gastro distress, uh, but I don't, I don't think that's yeah, what. Yeah, I've heard that one is a common one, but yeah. that's about it. Yeah, but I don't. That's, I don't. That's. Not, I don't think what's happening. I don't know. It's a really good question. Yeah. Because creatine's naturally found in food, yeah. so they yeah. must. I don't know. It's a really. really yeah, good Yeah, I would question. love to see. I would love to see some some research around the people specifically that are that have been considered dominant and see what they have in common. Maybe Doug, you could Google right now while we're talking. Uh, why are some people non-responders to creatine, and see what comes up? But I I don't know because it's a naturally occurring. Um, compound that you get in food, primarily animal yeah. meat. This can't be related to that deer tick uh, that uh, is going wow. on. People are getting like Did allergic about to uh, red meat. Yeah. Deer tick? There's a disease that's oh, spread by ticks. No. I've heard this that is, this causes is true. Wait a second. Isn't this Alex Jones' theory on how well, we're going to become his allergic thing to thing is that they're weaponizing it, right? Yeah. He's always the alarmist on that stuff. Oh, but, but it's we, a real thing. Real quick, back to the creatine. It says in this article that some people are slow twitch muscle fiber dominant and they store less creatine than fast twitch muscle fiber. Oh, interesting. Fibers. So they're not going to get uh, a lot of the benefits of the extra creatine. Although huh. I'll argue their organs, brain, and the rest of the body still will. So they probably should still take uh, creatine. But anyway, back to the deer tick. That's real. There's a tick that literally has a disease that they can give you that makes you allergic to red meat. Cool. And there have been people who have speculated or said that this will be an effective way to lower uh, carbon emissions oh by getting everybody god. to be allergic to red meat. Oh my god! Then they can't. Then they can't eat it anymore. Oh my god! I uh, know. Where is it? Where is it right now? Where is it spreading right now? Or where are we seeing the cases at? Yeah, are you looking you it know? up, Justin, or are you just uh, no, texting here? <laughs> It's, it's, it's texting like, my way sorry, out Sorry, I'm looking at booty pictures right now. <laughs> <laughs> the one that you said to yeah, yourself? Yeah. Am I growing? Thank yeah. you. My, are my glutes growing? I've been doing yeah. hip thrusts. Yeah, looking, yeah, looking yeah. great. Where do, are we, those? do we know Yeah, do we know where these 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 cases are popping up? And is this like three people that we're talking about right now? Or is it I believe actually? it's in southern states, but apparently it's moving north. Nice. Yeah, lovely. Okay, That's so cool. if it's in southern states, plural, and it's moving, this has to mean there's like several cases. This is not like just yeah. a handful of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah. No, it's not, I, not cool. Can I just tell you how mad I would be if that happened to me? Bro, that would be. I mean, I'm already mad <laughs> at our results, you know, <laughs> but I can't eat right now. Bro, that would be. That the, would be like the coup de grace for yeah, me. Yeah. It's like, just give up yeah. at that point. <laughs> hey, you know, Justin had to become a vegan. Oh. <laughs> mm. He'd be so sad. Imagine how viral we'd go if we, were, if we switch over to being vegan. I mean, no. One of us should be, right? Yeah, yeah. It's called the Lone Star Tick. That's what it is. Lone it's Star Tick. It's got a little. So, obviously, Texas. Yeah. No re reference, right? Wow. Well, it has one little like spot on its back. Can you back get look up for me like, like how many people are, are getting? How many people are allergic to red meat from ticks? You know that I said the word tick and my youngest said tit. He said tit. Yeah. yeah. He's oh tits. Yeah. Oh. I said, no, go tell your mom. <laughs> the kid, the kids. <laughs> the kid. I love what they put I still things. get Max to say parsley. He still can't say parsley very well. He still well. says. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure he's so mad at me whatever I say that. Anytime <laughs> I have an opportunity to. As many as 450,000 people. Whoa. Yes. 450,000 people are now that's, allergic that's to red meat. Way more than mm -hmm. I was anticipating. Yes. Yeah, I was like, I was waiting for a number like five. Real, are you sure about that? I mean, Google says it, so we have well, to believe we know it, you're right? Well, we Googler, so let's see. Let's, let's, let's He's hey, my Googler. Google skills are <laughs> fine, all right? Wow. A CDC report suggests as many as 450,000 people in the U.S. may have an unusual food allergy caused by the Lone Star Tick. Bro, that's a lot of people. It's called Alpha Gal Syndrome. Oh, what a fucked up name, too. Oh, you're an Alpha Gal? Uh, 450,000 people is a lot of people. That is. 
That sucks. And it, it, is this like, okay, so that's July 31st, 2023, where you just, you you shared that. I have some stats to add to this. Yeah, let's hear it. Let's it's, hear it. It's considered that the stat is significantly underestimated because uh, four out of five healthcare providers had little or no knowledge of the condition. And only so five, only 5% five of the providers feel, actually feel confident and be able to diagnose it. So it's, but it's more than that. What? Dude. Yeah. Now, this, is this is this like uh, recently just came out of nowhere, or has this been around forever and we just didn't know it? And that's a, a common. Well, I think too there was somebody that was talking about this on a panel that was kind of relating it towards like um, climate change, and so their mm. th their whole it, it was it was gross because they're starting to try to like. Uh, talk in the direction of, well, we can help, you know, lower emissions by eating less meat. And also there's this tick that we found that has this enzyme that, uh, you know, people makes people allergic to red meat. So this might help to decline the numbers of people eating red meat. And I was like, Excuse that's me? how it was positioned. That's, yeah. that's the video. Oh, wow. It first reported in 2002. See, it's new, dude. What? Yeah. And so the conspiracy theory is that this is an engineered uh, disease that was, that was put into ticks to yeah. Reduce our. Or maybe it was naturally found, but it's still like it's something that's getting you know weaponized. What if cows invented it? I know I'm too sober, sober to have this conversation right now. <laughs> Making a real thing, yeah. I dude. Know. Are you serious right now? Aliens I feel like I, I, I seriously, I have to have, I have to get a tinfoil hat now. Isn't I'm that like, annoying? It's just are, too many things. Are, too many slowly. things to account for. I know Adam's yeah. getting a little weird. Yeah, I said over Taylor Swift. What was the one you said? The leader of the Satan group. You don't know how to play the game very well. Yeah, you went. You went. That one made me laugh. You went full. Tinfoil, yeah, dude. You got to just gradually. Adam sends us a clip yeah. of, of, of a Satan leader. Of a, of a, like a Satan leader from the 1970s. Yes. Yeah, it looks yeah, like dude. Taylor Smith. Like, it's identical to her. Whatever happened to her. Just yeah. Little was, bits, dude. And now she's having these seances and yeah. her concerts is it, and stuff like that. Is it really this Somebody person? that looked like her. Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. like, come on, dude. Uh, that's, that's, that's crash me up. Hey, did I, did I, uh, did I, have you guys heard about, did you guys hear about that Instagram model that died? With that challenge, did you guys hear about this? What was the challenge? This was a while ago, but apparently there's like a anniversary of it, and the people, her family, you know, talks about it. Anyway, the challenge was to <clears throat> stick your head and body out the car and go topless, and then you film it for social media. You black out your boobs and you post it. Well, anyway, she did this, hit a light pole, oh yeah, and died. That's horrible. I know these challenges. I saw. Um, wow. I saw this. I saw this clip of these. <laughs> these. Wow. Well, did you Sorry. go too far right there? She went viral. Oh, she went too, Justin, went too, too far. Too hard, Justin. Okay. That is it's a hard. joke. It's too, <laughs> it, was, it was a while ago, so it's okay. Oh, yeah. you, it's okay. It's yeah. past that time. It just yeah. It's not. It's not right. I think we're fine. There, there, there is this like a uh, generation. I'm like so disconnected. You guys have younger kids, so maybe you guys are like better connected to it. The but, challenges, yeah. Uh, uh, and there's like like huge movements of like kids like literally just running around doing things with their phone for TikTok. Like that's I know, all. I know. That's all they do is go around. When and, we were kids, we did stupid challenges too, and they went viral on their own. Like who yeah. the hell? How yeah, did you who guys was spreading it. It was all just word of mouth. It was all word of mouth. Like the choke yourself out challenge. That was a big one. Mm -hmm. That's the only one I remember, actually. Do you guys remember the any gallon else? milk challenge? I mean, it was pretty lame. Oh, that's right. Honest. Yeah. You know, back then it would take years for something like that to make to like probably like oh yeah like those those things would last generations. Yeah, like a, the Tide Pod challenge lasts like a month. <laughs> Saying like enough for enough dumb people to get sick from it, and then it stops, and then they move the next. So maybe one. there's a positive. So that, that's the the silver lining in this, is that there's probably just as many stupid challenges, maybe more. But they last way shorter because it only takes a handful of people to die from these dumb yeah, challenges. Move on to the and next and everybody off. Boom. All right. Move we got on. a shout out for today's episode. Okay, I got one. I got a shout out. So if you like conspiracy theories, weird stories, disturbing stuff, there's a page on Instagram called Morbid Curiosity. K and it's spelled with a K. And uh yeah, it'll keep you up at night. It's, a, it's interesting stuff. <laughs> Good so, luck sleeping. Yeah, check it out. All right. Butcher Box is a company that delivers grass-fed meats, heritage pork, wild-caught fish, and more to your door. So if you like to eat high-protein meat, but you want it to be healthy and super high-quality, you want the animals to be treated well, Butcher Box is a great company. You also save money. It's inexpensive in comparison to its competitors if you go to the grocery store. Anyway... They're amazing. Go check them out. Go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump. And if you use that link, you'll get salmon included in your box 
for three months for free, plus $20 off your first box. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Tony from Minnesota. Tony, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Um, yeah, I'll just jump in, jump right into my question here. Uh, so m- my strength uh, pretty dramatically outweighs my strength stamina. Um, I already knew this for years, but right now running MAPS Powerlift is kind of highlighting it even more. So I was looking at like calculators uh, like within the program and my one rep max is way off of like my calculated eight rep max. Um, so in short, like my strength is pretty good, but my stamina sucks. And when I train for stamina, I always feel like I'm over training. And so this is from like my own experience, but also from running like anabolic advanced, um, et cetera. So I always feel like I've responded really well. It's like the one to four rep range. And even sometimes going past like eight reps, um, even feels like it feels kind of strange to me or just doesn't feel good, I guess. So my question is like, am I just like genetically prone towards, towards more gains from like a lower rep range? And and am I overdoing it, like doing those higher reps, even though I do see some results when I do it again, I just don't feel good when I do it. Yes. Um, Yes. So sure. So, uh, so yeah, just to put a little bit of background on, I've been lifting heavy for like 10 plus years. So since I was like 13, for like football and for rugby, and I always lifted heavy, like due to the demands of my positions, um, and I've always like, I've always lifted this way. This is kind of like my default. Um, and, but I always see tremendous results and I always feel better when I come back to that low rep range. So, yeah, Sound like so you sound. did rugby, so you got good endurance. It's muscle stamina you're talking yeah. about, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Stamina. So like, again, for like anabolic advanced, like push into like the 16 plus like 16 ish rep range, even like 12 to 20 within there. Like I usually, this doesn't feel good for me, I guess. Yeah. So th- this will help you out a lot. So yes, mm. you may be genetically so prone. Do it enough. Yeah. Well, you also may be genetically prone. You've trained like this for 10 years. Muscle fibers actually start to change a little mm. bit. So, you know, generally speaking, you hear about fast twitch muscle fibers, slow twitch muscle fibers, but there's fast twitch muscle fibers that can actually switch and act more like slow twitch. Uh, and then others that can act more like fast twitch. And then there's genetic predispositions i'm like you one rep max calculators if i base it off of what i did for 10 reps is always way off it's way off yeah i can always lift a lot more so i also have a genetic propensity for that so that's yes but here's the other part about high reps volume is sets times weight times reps so to give you an example let's say you did a bench press and you did a set of 300 pounds for two reps okay so that's a lot of weight for two reps Then let's say you did a set with 100 pounds for 10 reps. And you think, oh, 100 pounds for 10 reps, that's no problem. You actually did more volume, if you do the math. 10 times 100 is 1,000. 300 times 2 is 600. So higher reps, if you keep all the sets the same and everything else, the, the, the volume tends to be much higher. So what's probably happening is you're probably doing too much. So either lower the weight down and go easier. Or what I do is I lower the volume. I end up doing less sets when my reps are higher and I feel better because I did the exact same thing as you. I'd go to higher reps and I would look at the total sets as the volume and be like, I'm doing the same sets, but my God, I feel like I'm just wasted. And so uh, I had to lower the volume and uh, match it or get close to what I did before. And I was totally fine. Don't lie. You haven't done over 10 reps since 1997, <laughs> You got to scale it way down. <laughs> that one time. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I mean, sure. I, again, I can identify with this too. And, and so I don't know, I guess I don't, I don't really lean too much on the genetic propensity towards a lot of that. And when you can, in fact, kind of alter that a bit by the way you train and, and staying in that uh, focused adaptation for an adequate amount of time for your body to actually respond better to that. Um, I know for me personally, it's just like, I'll avoid it. So me going back to it, it sucks and I'll suffer my way through that style of training. Um, but to like fast twitch movements, like, so rugby, you got a lot of fast twitch movements. You got, you're sprinting constantly, so you can sprint for a good amount of time. So you're like, your work capacity is up there. Like you have the, mm-hmm. the ability there. I think it's more just, uh, the amount of time you've, you've placed in that direction in terms of those types of lifts for that many reps. Yeah. That's the, the silver lining here is this, this is where the, this is where the gains are, bro. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's the silver lining in this is that it's your opportunity for change. It's hard. You, you suck at it. We all have something like that in our in our training. There's things that we already gravitate towards, but where the, the where the most gains lie are the things that you're not good at or you don't like doing. And so, I mean, my suggestion would be to to lean into that. 
lean into it, stick with sure. it for a while. Don't bail on it. Like after just doing it a few weeks, yeah. like if you feel overtrained and like, you don't feel good, cut the sets. Yeah. So typically cut what I'll do down. when I bump the reps is uh, instead of doing three sets, I'll do one or two. And then that typically yeah. for me makes up the difference, but Adam's right. This is the gains. If you train like this for like four weeks and you, and you get the right amount of volume, that's going to be the key. You'll build muscle. You'll actually see some serious muscle gains. Then when you go back to your low rep training, it'll be fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when I was running anabolic advanced, um, I know there's like the optional sets within there, but I was peeling back even from the the not optional stuff too. Um, and I still felt like I was maybe over pushing it a, a couple of times. I had to implement, I had to for sure throw those deload weeks in there. Um, but I still saw some pretty good results from it. And then again, switching back to power lift, I like seeing really good results right now. Um, and I just feel better with it. So yeah, it's, it's probably a volume thing. Yep. Um, so, Cam, we, when you, cool. uh, when you talk about feeling overtrained, is it <laughs> in the workout you feel overtrained or is it like afterwards that you feel overtrained? What are your, what are your symptoms? Yeah, it'd be a little bit of both. So sometimes there'd be days I show up to the workout and I'm like just dragging ass <laughs> pretty much. Um, but then sometimes too, like I would notice if that repeated itself, like sleep quality would kind of drop like yeah. daily energy was probably my biggest one. Like I would just feel like lethargic throughout the day. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So then you are, you were doing yeah, too yeah. much. Yeah. Okay. I would cut the volume sure. even more. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Cool. So then, yeah, it sounds like, uh, what you're alluding to, like with the silver lining, then, um, I'm probably leaving a bunch of, a bunch of results on the table if I'm not leaning necessarily too much into, to that higher rep range. Yep. For sure. Yep. Yeah. For sure. Yep. We'll Seek it out. Yes, for sure. So then my other kind of like side question with that is like, I'm guessing if there's like results being left on the table there, you guys talk about like the granite versus like the bubbly look. Um, I feel like I have more of that granite look. You think I'm going to get some more of that leaning in that direction. You're, you're going to get a lot of hype. You're just going to get a lot of hypertrophy. Yeah. You'll get yeah. more of the bubble. Right. I, right, I, right, I, right. I bet you'll build like, like, if you do this right, you're going to build like, like serious muscle is what's going to happen. For sure. So long as you feed cool. yourself right too. Right. Yeah. And that's the big thing that for years I was under eating. And then obviously from like listening to your guys show, I, it took, I had to get over that mental hurdle, but, um, so yeah, for years I was under eating. And then for the last like six months, I've been like in an actual bowl and it's like the first strength gains I've seen in years. And it's been, it's been freaking awesome. awesome. So, good. How old are you? Yeah. Uh, I'm 23. What, what are your lifts? What's your squat dead and bench? Be yeah. Honest. So right now, so yeah, like my squat max calculated is like, I think it's like 350 or 340, but my what I squatted last week, I hit 385 for two. Whoa! Um, and then my bro. my deadlift is I think it's pretty much the same calculated, but my I pulled 425 for two. Wow. So I know those are kind of close. I'm working on my deadlift, and then my bench is like um, I think last week I hit 265 for two. Yeah, so bro, those those are, you're those strong, are, dude. Those are great yeah. numbers, bro. Yeah, the best the best anyone. part is you're no, you're you're gonna get a lot stronger. You're so yeah, young. You're so young. Yeah, you got like another ten years of strength gains. To be honest yeah. with you, yeah, uh, doing good. Yeah, that's good to hear. Because when I was in high school, I was I was lifting kind of like an ox, and I was I was a lot bigger. I played like lineman, so I was lifting a little bit more weight then. And I've been like this constant battle trying to get back to that. But um, your guys' advice throughout the years has been helping out a ton with that. So. Awesome. Dude, yeah, no, awesome, brother. Doing great, man. Yeah, yeah thanks ooh. for calling in, man. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You guys mind if I just add one more, one more little piece I wanted to no, mention? No, go for it. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the obligatory thank you as always, but I wanted to I wanted to throw this in because um, you guys have like literally changed my life. Um, for for background, for a little bit of context, uh, I went to school to to be an engineer. Um, and because although like um, health and fitness, exercise, whatever has has always been my passion, um, I never thought I could like make a living out of doing it. Um, but I kid you not, on my first week. Uh, like on my commute to work at, at my, my the first week of my engineering job, um, I was listening to you guys per usual. And then a, uh, a girl came on her show and she said that she had left her engineering job after like several years and she was never looking back. Um, and even just from listening to it, then I, I knew in my gut that I would end up being me and I just didn't know when. Um, so for the longest time, I considered NCI um, and, and jumping on board with them. And after like long story short, after tons of investment in them, I actually left my job in April. Um, so now I'm a full-time coach and I've literally never been happier. So I just oh, want to cool. say like, I can't thank you yeah. guys enough for like giving me the knowledge, the confidence and the tools just like to do what I do today. Excellent. Um, Amazing. And, like, dude. Yeah. And when people say like most of what they learn is from, from you guys compared to like certifications, like I completely, completely agree with that. <laughs> uh, your guys' content is obviously, um, best in the industry and uh, everything stems from you guys. So I'll, I'll, I'll think or I'll, I'll, I'll pass on my clients. Thanks to you. Cause their results, a lot of their results are coming from you guys too. So. 
Uh, awesome. Appreciate it. You guys have literally changed my life. Oh, so. that's great, man. I appreciate you saying yeah. that. Thank, Thank you, you so much, brother. 100%. Thanks, guys. Take it easy. I was going to say, oh, crap. You went from making good money to crap money, but he's with <laughs> NCI. So you're going to teach him how to build his business. So I'm not worried. I'm not worried. You know, I was going to say to him, I mean, because I know there is genetic propensities, right? But it's yeah, like, there, I mean, you could be bad at all rep ranges like Adam, which is <laughs> I just, I just don't like to lean on that, is my point. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Then you're just super handsy. Yeah, yeah, no, no, give me an, give me an you can't out have excuse. It all. <laughs> can't have it all. God was like, sex appeal, <laughs> <laughs> tall. Yeah. He only has so much to sprinkle. Yeah. yeah. Rep yeah. Not yeah. very good. Not yeah. very good in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> Looks Stupid. like it, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was that was a good call. Yeah. Our next caller, Steve from England. Steve, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey guys, uh, just want to say first of all, I started personal training in January. I started doing my qualifications last May. Found your podcast at the same time. And spammed about the first 400 episodes up until I finished my qualification and started and pretty much changed how I thought I was going to train. All the information I pretty much give my clients is pretty much what I hear on this podcast. So I just want to say thank you because um, it's been a massive help. The The information, not just about training but how to pick up clients as well so thank you for all the information first of all that you do for the the personal trainers among us that listen to this because it's uh it, it's really really great information but um thank you, steve thank you right on oh justin you're also my favorite by the way oh yes oh, so <laughs> take that screw you steve screw you <laughs> <laughs> You're breaking up now. Uh, we can't hear you. We can't, we can't hear you. We'll have Justin answer your question. Up. Let's go, Adam. <laughs> Turn the volume up, Doug. <laughs> go ahead. My uh, my main question is uh, regarding one of my clients that um, I've kind of been struggling with. They um, they suffer a lot with gym anxiety. Um, they come in. We have a great session, but then a couple of days after, because we're only having like one session a week. A couple of days after, I'll get a, a text message, like them saying that they want to quit. I want to give up. And I'll have to try and talk them around, talk them out of it, talk them into coming in again next week. They come in the following week. We have a great session. They they absolutely love the session and say, yep, this is great. This is what I want to do. But then a couple of days later, I'll get a pretty much a similar message. And it, it keeps going on that sort of cycle. And I never be able to try and really crack down on to, to why they keep, you know, as soon as they're away from me and I don't really have that one to one uh, communication with them, they seem to really then struggle and want to just give up and just quit. Um, and a lot of it is that sort of anxiety. But and so my question is, how would you guys like if you uh, had a client that was like that, what would your response be? I had a few uh, clients like that. Yeah, no, I think this this is actually pretty common. Yep. Um, couple things. One, uh, a lot of when someone says something like that, one of the one of the worst things that we could do as coaches and and trainers is to uh, right away default to the motivation hype thing and challenge how they're feeling. Right, like no, you stay with it. You're good. like, and it, and that's the natural thing to to want to do. Instead, I'm going to ask more questions. Why do you feel that way? What's going on? And I want to unpack like what is making them feel discouraged because that's normally why they're giving up. They're discouraged about something and I need to get to the bottom of what is making them feel discouraged. And then I want to figure out whatever that is and then encouraging that, hey, listen, it's okay. We're on the right path. We're making the right steps in the right direction. So moving in that direction versus, again, just trying to be the, the high, no, you got this. You don't want to just right away, they say they're not motivated and they go right into like, I'm trying to motivate them. Instead, w find out why they're feeling this way. What is it? What happened today? What's going on with you? What's happened the last few days? Why do you feel discouraged? And then making them feel normal. Oh, that's totally normal. Most of my clients, when they first start, they feel this, they think this, they notice that. Don't worry. This you want to validate better. them. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. You want to validate why they feel that way, not try and overcome it and just be like, oh, try to hype yeah. them, right? So that's a mistake they make. What's but, the reason that they tell you that they're, they're anxious? Have they said that to you? Um... It's yeah, the I think it's just like a multitude of things. So they come in, obviously, they come in into a gym where there's a lot of people that's been training there for, you know, 
years so those sort of people are just coming in they're jumping on machines they're not really giving it a second thought and so they've got that kind of anxiety of what's everybody else thinking about me when i'm doing something mm. which is well nothing because they're so focused on what they're doing majority of the time they're not thinking about what you're doing you know at, at all and so i've tried to really stress that to them but there's kind of that there's um yeah i think it's just the really the, that lack of self-confidence mm. in themselves to the uh however many sessions that we've had and i've reassured them that on the exercises that are in their program that they've got great form they're doing really well with them um but it's just that uh all of a sudden when i'm not there they're questioning themselves constantly yeah. um and then it's it's really weird as well because like the the reasonings for quitting is oh your clients need your time more than like i do and it's it's you know they they need they need me and i stress no i like i want to help you i want to spend my time helping you but yeah it's like oh no you you know don't don't bother with me i'm not worth it sort of you know there's other people that need you i i got something for you steve hmm. i got i got something for you i had a client just like that um, all right. So a couple things as a trainer, first off the, 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 you said that, you know, you were thanking us for information, but you're, you're the one making the difference. That's why we talk to trainers. We could give all the information in the world, but we're not, we're not affecting people like you are. That's just hands down. Okay. Number two, the trainer's job is to train a client well, but also provide a good experience for the client. And how do you create a good experience? You want to know what they're looking for, uh, what their struggles are. So I had a client once that uh, there, there was just, the, the gym was too stimulating, too loud. And so what I did is I always set aside a quiet part of the gym to do our workout where it was just us, a pair of dumbbells. It was a little darker, a little quieter. So that's part of it. Here's another thing that you could do that's, that's really helpful. Because of the other members in the gym or staff, before they show up, you could go to some of your regulars or staff that you know and say, hey, uh, Susan's about to come in. She's always very anxious. She feels like people are watching her when she comes in. If you could, when you notice she's doing something right, maybe halfway through the workout, come over and give her a positive comment because then she's going to feel like, wow, you know, these people kind of know me and then they'll develop a relationship and that's what's going to keep them coming uh, to the gym. Um, lastly, uh, you were talking about just their their how they said to you, you need the time to help other people. This might sound counterintuitive, but this is a big one. Ask this client for a favor or ask this client information that'll benefit you. Now you're going to think, well, how does this help? It's going to make them feel valuable. Right now it sounds yeah. like they feel like they're a burden is probably yeah. what they're feeling like. So I had clients like this as well. And then when they would come in, uh, one person that I trained was a professor. She felt very insecure and she would make comments like that. Oh, I must be your worst client and I'm taking up a lot of your time or whatever. So when they came in, I would ask them questions about their profession, things that I was actually interested in. And then I would say something like, man, I learned a lot from training you. I really enjoy asking you questions. I hope that's okay. And then what it does, it gives the person, makes them feel valuable. Like, oh, I, 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 you know, Steve asking me stuff and I'm giving him stuff in return, not just my money for the session. And then of course, express this. Don't say, I want to help you because that can, it can strengthen the feeling of being a burden. It's more like this. I really enjoy hanging out with you. I really love being around you and training you. This is, this is fun for me. So it's more like, a, I like doing this for something for me, not I like doing this for something for you. So when someone feels like they're a burden, what they don't want to hear is, oh, I love be you that you're a burden. What they what they sh want to hear is more like, well, how is this benefiting you? How is Why are you coming to see me besides the fact that you're you know altruistic and you want to help me, which just makes me feel worse? So ask them for favors, ask them questions, comment on how much value they bring you, and that will help them feel more, more valuable and less like a burden. Mm -hmm. I have one more to add to that too, Steve. Are you, uh, I guess what, somewhere between 15 and 30 clients you're probably managing? Is that how many you have? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I'm doing, so not quite that many clients, <laughs> but I'm between that in sessions oh, through okay. the week. Oh, so even easier yeah. than yeah. what I'm going to say. 
Uh, this is what's so cool about the era we live in with text message. Sending a message that says, hey, thinking about you right now. Hey, what you doing? What are you up to? Like a, a small message daily. Like I used to carve out just a, a block of my time a day and it would, I would literally just hit them all with a message. And of course, the more personalized you can make it, you know your clients better than anybody. So you know the things they're into, you know the goals, you know the things that they're challenged with. So just doing that, shows that you care outside mm -hmm. the one hour they're paying you for your time. And so that adds a lot of value with a little bit of effort and time on your part. And a lot of times that's just all this person needed was to know that you care and you're paying attention and you're watching, which was like, damn, I was, and I don't, I can't tell you how many times I caught a client, like, man, I was just about to go do this. And because you text me, like mm -hmm. I'm out now, I'm going to go watching me. Yeah, I'm going go to yeah, go do my walk or whatever like that. Or they feel like, oh, I'm so you text me and I just made a decision to do this instead of that. I'm so, and I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Just thinking about you. So that's such a small little thing that you can do that adds tremendous value to your coaching. Awesome. Thank you. I do, if it's all right, just have one uh, one quick question just about me, just because with time, and I never thought I would struggle with this working in a gym constantly, but like my <coughs> own workouts. So um, I'm probably down to a maximum of now about three workouts a week that I'm kind of being able to squeeze in, um, which is fine because I'm hitting full body in all of those three workouts. But is there... Uh, if you were, could only hit, like, say you had maybe an hour and a half, three times a week, is there a, uh, would you stick to full body or would you uh, do something else for yourselves? 100%. Yeah. Maps anabolic. Favorite host. What, is, what do you have to say about yeah. that? Yeah. 100% <laughs> anabolic. <laughs> I mean, that's, we have it all laid out there for you. I mean, that's pretty much the protocol. It's optimal even, you know, three times a week to, to do full body and then be able to recover in between. So you'd be, yeah. you'd be perfect with that. Yeah. And if, if you have, if you have other things you want to work on, you can modify You're a trainer. So you know how to modify the routine if it's yeah. more mobility or whatever. And then on your days off, uh, you know, you're, you're probably walking a lot cause you're in the gym. I remember how many steps I took when I was training clients. So your activity levels are probably great. Between that, I am doing because obviously you guys recommended it right from the start, the, the trigger sessions. So I do mm -hmm. get trigger sessions in between that as often as I can you're as fine. well. Yeah. You're doing that's, good, bro. Yeah, you're great, brother. Yeah, you're perfect, doing good. Man. No, that's great. Perfect. Thank you very much, guys. You got, oh, oh hold on real quick. You're a trainer. Do you have Maps Prime Pro? Yes. No, no. Oh, Adam, uh, relax. Uh, we're sending it to you right now. He's new. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're going to send it to you right pass. now. That'll, that'll help you. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys. That's awesome. Thank you very much. You got it, Steve. Steve. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Uh, you know, that was a, you know, uh, that was a big one for me was, uh, I don't remember who told me that, but they said, I asked a cl another client of mine yeah. and I said, God, I have this client that's, you know, I get a challenge with cause they're so, I feel like they feel like they were a burden or whatever. They like ask them for a favor. I'm like what? I'm like, no, man, it'll make them advice. feel yeah. like valuable. And I did. And I started asking, and it was fun for me cause I love asking questions. And then this person was so confident coming in because they felt like they offered me something in return. Which yeah, is you cool. said that, and it was like I could just piggyback on that. But that's like the I, I, that's exactly where I was thinking because I had to learn the hard way of just like um, that person. I, I thought that I just needed to keep giving them positive affirmation all yeah, the time, yeah, positive, yeah. positive, positive, and it was just like so draining, you know, as a trainer to just constantly try to pump somebody up that like kind of is doom and gloom and coming in and thinking they're a burden and everything. But really, yeah, to to be able to to uh, acknowledge like their strengths and then like, yeah, you, uh, you pull that out of them more and get them actively using that, you know, and helping one of my other clients yeah. with it. or, you know, like you said, like kind of pulling that information out for me personally, like I, I learned to do that as well. Well, someone that struggles with that, they struggle with value and purpose totally. and you give that to them. It's a lot like the advice that Arthur Brooks gave you when you gave money to the bum. hundred percent. Yep. It's like, here, exactly. you're, give, you're giving money to that person. I know it's not politically correct <laughs> to say bum. Jesus. <laughs> to the bum. <laughs> we live in this world, right? What's the, what is the fucking sh uh, struggling Just person? Homeless. Person. Yeah. Uh, Homeless. Struggling, struggling, okay. struggling, struggling homeless person, right? <laughs> Fucking guy. So that to advice the, to, to have him pray for you or to do something for you gives that person. Have you guys done that, by the way? Yeah, I have no idea. I've I, done you that. Know me. I, don't I gave money to, to, to. I gave money to this, this guy who was sitting there. He had because he had a dog with him. So I was like, oh man. And I said, hey, can you do me a favor? You know, I don't remember what it was. My kid's doing this thing. Can you pray for me? And his face lit up. And I was like, oh god, that was great. Yeah, it really yeah. worked. 
The other one thing is the the text thing, dude. That has been such a yeah. Of course, when that came like become a popular thing where everybody has has text message. I was you know towards the end of my career. What that was like a game. You know, changer. before text, I actually had a trainer. I never did this because it took too much work and I don't want to do it. But I had a trainer that used to write uh, short notes or postcards and would send it to random clients, <laughs> yeah. and it was like huge returns and how the client. Felt. We ta we taught that in the gym for yeah. sales guys. If someone walked and oh, they didn't yeah. buy, they'd yeah. have a stack, and you already had it stamped and it ready to go. So you would just Send write a quick note, and it was such a powerful thing. And so it goes a long way with people. Yeah, if you're training, come on, fifteen clients or less, especially. I mean, that's literally takes literally 15, 20 minutes out of your day, not even to do that to send mm. to all of them. Oh, and, yeah. and you know, if you literally do that every other day with you know half the half your group. You'd be surprised how far just them knowing that you care outside. They expect you to care in that hour. They pay you. Yeah. Right? The so, rest is just delivering more than they expect. Yeah. You know? And so coming over the top like that. Our next caller is Marina from Kentucky. Marina, how can we help you? Hi. Um, I just like to start off and say I'm really nervous. So hopefully I can articulate my point. Um, and just to thank you because I've listened to you through so many huge milestones of my life, uh, meeting my boyfriend, getting married, going through college and graduating. And um, actually, thanks to you, I was able to start my own business, uh, helping people in rural Kentucky, uh, just making fitness and health information more accessible to them. So thank you. Awesome. awesome. Wow. Um, oh, cool. Right. How can we help you? Yeah. Uh, so my question was inspired from your Muscle Mommy episode. I am an uh, aspiring muscle mommy and I just, I want to know how to get past, I feel like I'm at a plateau and I feel like I have a good lean tone physique that a lot of women want, but I really want to be bulky in my upper body. And it's been a great selling point to my clients, uh, telling them that, look, just by lifting heavy, you're not going to get bulky, but I really want to get bulky. Um, and I've, <laughs> I've gone on bulks in the past. Um, this past winter, I was pushing over 3,000 calories. Mm. Um, yeah, so, and that was a lot. I squat 300 pounds. I deadlift 315 and I bench 155. Um, so I've been focusing on my compound lifts. I've religiously eaten one pound of protein per gram of, uh, one gram of protein per pound of body weight, and I take creatine every day. And yeah, I guess I'm just kind of stuck at the point. I don't know whether I should continue to bulk up. Or if I should try and lean out and, and see more muscle definition. The in body tells me I'm about 17 and a half percent body fat. So I don't know if that's accurate, but I just feel like I'm not at the physique I want and I feel stuck. Well, all right. You need to be, you need wow. to take it easy on yourself. Wow. Yeah. You're okay. Crushing hold on. It. Let's just, let's just, let's just <laughs> run, do the rundown here. 300 pound squat. Yeah, let's do dude. the rundown here. I know. You're 23. Yeah. I think you're, you need to recognize obvious, all this. You're obviously fit. Okay. You can bench. 155 pounds, squat 300 and deadlift 315. You are a muscle, maybe you're not a mommy, but you are in that category yeah. of a muscle person. Oh. In your comment, you, in your in your email, you said you want to be able to walk down the street and people think, wow, she hits the gym. I guarantee you people think that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 They, <laughs> they do already. Yeah. yeah. Now, now here's the positive. You're 23. Your mm -hmm. max muscle and strength um, peak, you haven't even hit yet. I know everybody talks about like, mm -hmm. you know, early twenties and this and that. No, no, no. When people lift weights and they're trying to get muscle and get stronger, most people hit their peak through consistent training right around mid thirties. You got more muscle. You can, and you're already crushing. I mean, Doug's Joel, pulling up your pictures. Your back canal. Yeah. You're bro, killing it. Jacked. You're yeah. So <laughs> I, I, I think you're being really hard on yourself, yeah, but you want some advice. All right, here you go. Yeah. Um, if you know, I think bulking is fine. I think cutting is fine for you too because your calories are so high. So you could go on a cut just to have some fun, get yourself down to 15, 14% body fat. That'll be kind of cool. Take it slow, then go back on a bulk. Honestly, your best bet is going to be to alternate between yeah. bulking and cutting. But if your ultimate goal is to build muscle mass, I would spend about two thirds of the time in a bulk and about one third of the time in a cut. And that's going to get you a nice, even muscle, you know, minimal body fat gain over time. But God, you're yeah, no, you're killing one it. of the one of the hardest or worst parts about getting as strong and as fit as you already are is that expectation of it's going to keep going this way. Like you, you have reached a a 
a physique at this point and strength level at this point, this young in your life. I don't know a lot of women that can deadlift 350 I pounds. I don't know. I mean, I know people that have been lifting their whole life uh, that it won't hit some of these numbers, won't look like you look like. You, so you, you have to know that. And the gains that you probably saw in the last, say, three years – uh, that's not going to happen anymore. It's, you're just not going to see those types of. So I think you're going to where you're going to be have to be at. And we've talked about this on the show is it gets really important to start to focus on different goals. So I don't want to tell you what your goal needs to be. I don't want to tell you you can't get bulkier, or build more of an upper body. It's to each their own. But for keeping yourself happy and sane, I think it's a good exercise to venture out into other goals. And it doesn't mean you can't revisit that goal, but if you stay so focused on that goal all the time and you, you're going to get frustrated because you're not, you're just not, I don't see your squat going up to 350 or 400 pounds anytime soon. I don't see you getting, uh, you know, adding even that much more muscle to your upper body. I mean, you're in really, and we'll definitely post your, your photos so the audience can see what we're talking about. Like, <laughs> You're in you're in incredible shape and you're in unbelievably strong already, and so it can be discouraging to be just focused on that all the time. So that's that's my yeah. I definitely think shifts in the goal, but still making it um, it's something obviously strength related uh, will benefit the overall whole. The byproduct will be your body will change and shift in a little bit of a different direction. Most of the times, it's desirable. I think too, like um, in terms of like getting people's attention and whatnot. I know you guys have mentioned this multiple times when you lean out a bit more and your muscles are defined a bit more. It's, it's definitely stands out. So even just, you know, going through that process of, of leaning out a bit, coming back and, and building muscle again, I think, I think you're going to get a lot of what you're, you're seeking. Yeah. And you're already. in a healthy, you're in a healthy place to do all that. How long have you been lifting consistently? Uh, probably three and a half years. Well, I started with CrossFit and long endurance running, and then I listened to why women should bulk. And I was like, okay, well, I'm not doing the right thing. So I stopped doing CrossFit and I started following like a progressive overload, uh, strength training. So Jesus Christ. So in three years <laughs> you went for, you went, you, these are your lifts. Yeah. Yeah. I think you'll, yeah. I think you'll get close to 400 pounds yeah. with your squat. I, it's going to take some time. You're already, but you're going to get diminishing. I'm going to tell you this though. You'll, you're going to start to get diminishing returns because yeah. you're so strong. Yeah. That now you're flirting with. Is it worth it to add 50 pounds to these lifts? That's why I recommend of, going a different direction. I what think. are you following any of our programs? Uh, yeah, I'm doing Maps Strong right now, and I'm hoping to do. Well, I was going to do Sweet. anabolic again, and then after that, I was going to do Maps Power Lift. I think. Have you done yeah. symmetry? Yeah. Not yet. Okay. No. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to do map symmetry and then I want you to do maps anabolic advanced. I think those are the programs. I've done that... maps anabolic advanced. I loved it. Dude, okay. are you kidding me? No way. I would like to, I like to see her old time. Old time. Oh, Let me see her. Thank you. Oh, Adam. Shit. Old time, bro. Are you That's kidding me? right. That's a new yeah, program. Dude. The fact that about she's that. already strong as fuck and this, it'll be it'll very It'll take you completely out of oh, mind, yeah, out of so, body. You so have to learn different. all new It's so skill. different. We're going to send you our new program. By the way, I love the fact that you knew to gravitate towards strong anyways, because I would have went, that would have been another recommendation. So the fact that you're doing map strong, I think that's got a lot of unique movements probably you're not used to in there. So that's great for you. Uh, old timey strength is going to be even more unique. Yeah, that, that's that's and I, great. And I selfishly just want to see what you could do. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, there's a competition <laughs> part. I'd love to see you in there. Hey, yeah. you know, there's one thing you missed. You, you you didn't you didn't tell us. Doug scrolled down here. You you had a eating disorder before you started all this training. I did. Yeah, that was part of my long endurance uh, cardio, um, and that's actually the reason I became a personal trainer is because I was so miserable. I was trying to lose as much weight as possible. I was trying to just be the smallest version of myself working out like three hours a day. Mm. And again, like I, I started listening to you and you guys really saved my life. And, um, that's part of the reason I, I went into personal training is that so I can save other women from that. You wow, are a so tremendous rad. success story. Yeah. So that's awesome. incredible. Especially at your age, you're doing a great job. Matt maps, old time strength, follow it. You're going to yeah. love the program. And I think when you go back to, especially your deadlift will probably go up as a result. We'll get even stronger for sure. Yeah. I do have one more question if you have time. We do. Fire away. Um, what are the odds that a woman can bench 225 pounds? Because uh -huh. that's my big, big goal. But I feel like it was so hard for me. I, my legs are so strong, but my upper body has always been a huge challenge. And it was a, a struggle for me to hit a plate. Mm. And I just feel like my body's kind of talking to me at 155. Like sometimes I feel it in my ulnar nerve and... Um, I, I don't know. Is it real? Is it a realistic goal for a woman to for, 
to shoot for 225. First of all, benching 155 pounds <laughs> yeah, yeah. at your body weight is yeah, insane. Yeah. Marina, it was hard for me to get to a plate. Yeah. Benching. So 225, <laughs> it, it, very, very few women can bench uh, two plates. And like, and weigh what you weigh. That's a super... I, I'm pretty sure any woman that's benching over 225 is yeah. probably now, like now, 30 plus. Now, someone as strong as you in such a short period of time uh, I would say your odds are much higher than the average person. You obviously have some genetic gifts along with the, with the fact that you're consistent with your training. But to bench that much, you're going to have to go straight, dedicated, powerlifting style training. But I'm going to tell you something right now, Marina. You're not going to feel as good as you do now no. trying to push something like that. So you're talking about your ulnar nerve and joint stuff. You're going to sacrifice a lot of joint uh, health and stuff maybe, maybe, chasing that. Maybe you should, for shits and giggles, though, just go to a powerlifting meet and put yourself in because I bet you you fucking win. I think you'll do, I especially you, with your deadlift. I think fun. you would already probably yeah. win. Uh, those numbers, I think, are... Tested, drug tested, yeah. Yeah, awesome. yeah. I think you already <laughs> would be in in the upper, you know, top top five percentile in yeah. powerlifting. I yeah. think you would, you'd be blown yeah. away. Are you taking, uh, you taking creatine? Yes. All yeah. Right. All right. Good. Steroids. That's, that's all. I feel no, like no, no sure steroids. <laughs> call, no. She's all not yet. Don't do that. Don't, don't do, do that. that. <laughs> no. Uh, it's tempting. No. Don't no, do that. No. 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 That <laughs> was, you that was start, sarcastic. Unless you want to start peeing standing up. Yeah, don't yeah, do that. No. No. That was sarcastic. <laughs> You're doing a great job, Marina. You are. Yeah. Thank you, guys, so much. You got it. And thanks for being a great trainer. Yeah. Thank you. Bye bye. I, I love it when people are like, "How do I get?" buffed and strong and they're hella buffed and strong yeah yeah, yeah. i'm like are you asking me a Already? real question like, right now this feels like there's not a real question i mean she's like you're talking about a genetic freak right there yeah dude i mean she's, three years of lifting yeah she looks crazy that's dude. one of the strongest like she's 20, 23 year olds she's i know she's 23 yeah, yeah i'm pretty sure she's stronger than me in almost every lift right now yeah i don't think I, maybe i got I'm her positive on, maybe i got her on <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you take you in a fight. <laughs> I, I tell you, hey, listen, this is for for listeners. I actually had this conversation with Kyle earlier. He's one of our editors, really strong kid, young too. If you if you actually pay attention to lifters, uh, everybody thinks, oh, you peak at eighteen or twenty. Listen, if you lift consistently, your best lifts are probably going to be around mid thirties. This yeah. is just statistically how it is, or at least thirty. Yeah. So so you can lift in your twenties and be like, oh my god, I'm never going to hit this again. If you're good and consistent, you take care of yourself and all that stuff, and nothing goes wrong, you'll probably hit more numbers up until you get to your mid thirties. Well, that uh, just it just highlights how much of a skill this is. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like and what training does. Yeah. Well, speaking of, yeah, that's why I'm selfish. I'm glad you brought up old time because yeah. I would I just really want to see her go through that. Somebody that has that. Um, you know, capability of uh, strength wise and, and to, to apply it in such an unconventional direction. Yeah. And that's going to benefit so many things for her if when she goes to pursue your power lifts. And I want to see her do those, the, uh, the strength test. Yeah. I, Marina, if you listen to this, make sure you follow up with us. I'd love to hear her. In fact, you get should, her in the form. Yeah, put her in the form. What the hell? Because I want to see, I want to see her go through old timey. Yeah. I just can't wait to see what she can do. Awesome. Our next caller is Candace from Tennessee. Hi, Candace. How can we help you? Hi, guys. Thank you for having me on. Just wanted to say I've been listening for over five years and have been cheering you guys on from the sidelines since I found you. So thank you. I am thrilled about how much you have grown, um, not just with your business, but your own personal self-development. It's been great to watch that. And thank you for being so courageous and putting all of your wisdom and knowledge out there for us. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. No problem. So my question is pertaining to something that keeps happening to me while I'm working. I'm a 42 year old mental health therapist um, and I have an overall clean diet. So I try to stay away from refined sugars and preservatives as much as possible, but I'm noticing after a really intense session and it's usually it's when I'm working with couples where their emotional reactivity is really high. My body is like feeling the heightened energy in the room, but I have to stay really sharp and really focused during those times. So after the session ends, I get like an overwhelming urge for carbs of any kind. So I'll start rummaging through my desk drawers and I'm going in the kitchen looking for anything that I can eat really quickly because I have like two to five minutes before the next session starts. And full transparency, if I find gummy bears, I will eat a handful of those hmm. um, within like five seconds. I love them. And anything else that I reach for, like I've tried almond butter, I've tried pistachios, it doesn't seem to quench that craving. Mm -hmm. um, so my question is, I'm wondering if you have insight to why this might be happening. Um, is it a glucose issue or is something else being depleted? 
And then also, if you have suggestions for what I should be reaching for that would provide my body with what it needs um, and not disrupt my diet so much. Candace, are people, there, people are so, would be so surprised to, to see how much the brain utilizes of glucose and you put yourself into a mental battle like that. Like I can't imagine like the way your, your brain is having to operate. It requires so much energy. So much energy. Yeah. And, and on another level, when you have a profession like that, and so it's it's actually very normal that you would crave something like that, and you've made the connection of like specifically like what type of sessions like that's I imagine yes. very stressful, a lot of thinking, processing, real time. Uh, that well, can be incredibly draining and well, very let's, normal. Let's parse this out. Do you have any other signs of low glucose? Do you have anxiety, energy crashes, nausea, dizziness? Like cold sweats. I do not. Okay. And I've tested my levels several times okay. and they're normal. That's not that then. So here's what's happening. And you you know this, actually. You know what's going on. Because uh, once I tell you, then you're going to be like, oh, yeah, of course. When people feel um, uh, a, a great deal of stress or anxiety or fear or challenge, we tend to want to comfort ourselves with something that gives us a little bit of reprieve. And there's a lot of different ways to do this. Uh, there's better ways than others. And sugary or uh, starchy foods are hyper palatable and they give us a, uh, it's like a sense of relief. Like, oh, it's enjoyable to eat this. It's a break. Yeah. It's a break from the intense session that you just had. It has nothing to do with your glucose levels. If you're not getting any of the symptoms and you tested your glucose. So this is not a physiological thing in that sense. This is more of a mental thing or psychological thing or behavioral thing that happens where you just need a break in between sessions because what you just did, it's like a reset because you got this, you just went through shift. one, yeah. you got to switch and now you got to meet with someone else. You don't want to carry that into the next session. So subconsciously you're like, I need a break. This tastes good. This feels good. And for five minutes I get a, a, a tiny break. The only way that this is going to be remedies if you find a substitute. Okay. So the techniques that you teach your clients on how to get themselves to recenter themselves and to feel better or give themselves a short break. Let's say that they start to lose it with their kids or their spouse or those techniques that you teach them, you can actually apply on yourself, Candace. And that you would have to build a relationship with those things. So it takes a second, just like when you teach your clients, Hey, when you're arguing, you feel yourself get elevated, take a break. It's like a practice. You got to get used to it. But once they do it, it's like, okay, this is great. So you have to find yourself a replacement uh, for that. Otherwise it's not going to go away. I could say eat a protein meal, but like you said, it doesn't do it for you because it's not giving you the, the, the it doesn't feel good in the same way. So it's not giving you that kind of break. So right. I would think of of something else that could do that for you. Uh, it could be meditation. Yeah. It could be stretching. That's really hard to do, but that's yeah. the direction I was thinking. Yeah, it could be music. It'd be going outside. You know, it could be belly breathing. Uh, you know more techniques than I do. Uh, on the, in this particular case, but uh, but that's what's happening is you're looking for reprieve and that candy or that sugar or starches is what's it's I, giving it to you. I think there's a possibility it could be a combination of that with still something going on nutritionally. What what does your food look like heading into these sessions? How have you how, how do you normally eat? So like, do you have any idea how many carbs you eat in a normal day, <coughs> and then about how many calories or what you would have done before you go into these sessions? Yeah. So usually I, I stick around 2000 calories a day. Um, I will admit usually my carbs are lower and my fat intakes higher. My protein, I usually get around 100, 120 grams a day. Um, but I, and I eat high protein for breakfast because a lot of times I don't even know if I'm, if I'm so busy, I might not even get a lunch. So I try to eat protein. So I'm satiated, but probably not as many carbs in the morning. That's, that's actually a, better. That's I, a good thing. Yeah, it's actually yeah. a good thing. So I, I, I thought it might be the opposite and then was going to suggest to you to do exactly what you're already doing. I don't think it's a nutrition it, thing. Well, I mean, you can still- well, I've also, I'm sorry. I also try, like I do the breathing techniques, right? So I do have like a 15 minute breathing and meditation, but I, I don't know if this might be a part of it too, but I've thought about like, I can feel in my body, like the adrenaline yep, pumping, yep. even though logically, you yep. know, mm -hmm. I'm very focused and centered. Um, I have a background where I was in a, a pretty abusive um, childhood. And so it's like, my body will do that. And when they leave, it's almost like I can 
feel that something drop and then I just want to grab and inhale yeah. sugar. Well, then that definitely. Uh, yeah. So what's happened. Highlights with Sal. Said. Yeah. What's happened is you found some reprieve. Some association. Yeah. Uh, and that now you've built a relationship with it. And so now it's become very effective at doing what you're looking, what you're trying to get. You're not going to find a replacement for it that is going to give you what that gives you right out the gates because you've already developed this relation. Like how long have you been doing this for, for example? Five years. Yeah. So you have developed a five-year relationship with this to the point where your body anticipates it and you get relief before you even probably process or- Just knowing you're going to do it. Right. So <laughs> it's going to take some time to develop a new relationship with a new practice, but the only way to do it is to- create a new relationship and and replace that behavior because honestly not doing anything is going to be too much of a jump. Yeah. What I was going to, so yeah. what do you think, Sal? I mean, my suggestion would be like a bridge to that, which would be like finding a better. So I, I love these, like, uh, you know, cause I have a sweet tooth, right? So uh, I can definitely relate to like that type of craving like and feeling fruit option or something. Yeah, well, or some sort of like a, you know, high protein sugary fruit bar, like thing that you make like a homemade mm. version. Like we make these incredible, like peanut butter balls that we make that are like, Definitely when I'm craving sweet foods, it gives me that that kick. Mm -hmm. So have you tried like replacing it with a, a just a better choice? It could still have sugar in it, but just a healthier, more balanced one, like macro profile that has some protein. Yeah, a little more fiber in there to kind of yeah, a little, a little, a little bit of everything. Have you tried stuff like that? Honestly, the only other thing that I've tried besides healthy nuts um, is dark chocolate. So I'll I'll eat a dark chocolate bar, but it doesn't have the the protein and the fiber that you're mentioning. So. Did you have dairy? Yes. You know, uh, full fat yogurt with fruit or honey. Um, I've had clients who found that to be kind of a nice bridge. Um, okay. And you get the fat, you get the protein, you get the sugar. It's it's palatable. It's pretty palatable. Um, yeah. And it, so it can do even, it well. even something crazy like Magic Spoon. I would use that as a bridge potentially too. Yeah. It's, uh, you could smoke a cigarette in between. <laughs> 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 nice menthol. Really. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Calms, calms me down between. No, I mean, I'm just trying to find. I'm trying to find something to to bridge this, right? Because I yeah. I think you're right. Going from somebody who's already connected the gummy bears and stuff like that to going to nuts, you're just not going to get that satisfaction. So something like that that'll give you a little bit of sweet, but it's just a better, healthier choice. This is, I think, a great place to potentially use something like Magic Spoon. Yeah, I think there's, there's value there. You know what else too? This is this helped me a lot. Okay. Um, and I, I'm assuming therapists are similar to trainers in the sense that we uh, are much better with how we work with our people. Like I give really good advice to my clients. Then when it comes to taking my own advice, sometimes I don't, a lot of times I should say, I don't do it. So uh, practice that. Okay. If I was my own patient, what would I say? Let me go through this experience. Let me do this. And what it's going to do is it's also going to make you a better therapist because now you're going to feel the experience of changing the behavior and what it feels like. And the reason why I'm saying that to you, Candace, is you're probably a therapist because you really care about helping people. And so that might be a strong motivator and be like, okay, I know I'm doing this and this sucks. I'm doing this to become a better therapist. I'm experienced this. This sucks. I know what it feels like. Oh, I got to create this new behavior, but I'm going to do it. And then, and then I know it's going to help me. Uh, communicate this to other people because I'm experiencing it myself. That m tends to work with me motivational wise. If I start to put myself in the shoes of my client and then say it's going to make me a better trainer, then I tend to be a little bit more motivated because I used to care so much about helping them. So if you try yeah, to. I've, I've absolutely suggested Greek yogurt with fruit to my clients <laughs> when they talk about cravings, but it's not something that I reach for. So you're right. Yes. We don't practice a lot of the times the things that we're preaching. So hard. Candace, you're, you're, you're a mental health expert, right? Can I ask you a question? Sure. What's wrong with Adam? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Well, I tell you what, he's not. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's not a narcissist. I've uh, heard that come up. Adam is you. not a no. Thank you, Candace. Can we clip that, please? I'm going to need, I'm gonna need to use yeah, that, please. Yeah, yeah. One more you question. Sure. Why, why am I always wrong at home? What's going on here? Yeah. I'm always wrong. What's the deal? Because you're, you're the male in the relationship. Oh, oh wow. Yeah. I like you. I'll get your phone number afterwards. And hire you. This is awesome. No, I, you know, I, ho I hope that helps you out, Candace. Um, but that's tough, man. It's, it's tough to replace something that's worked so well. Uh, mm -hmm. it, in the sense of, you know, helping you kind of transition from one patient to another or client to another. So it's going to be a switch. There's going to be a process. It's probably going to take months. 
of starting to feel like I'm getting something out. I'm getting out of this new behavior, what I used to get out of the old one. But there's mm-hmm. going to be a period there where it's going to suck for a little while. So I also want to point out, I mean, I think this is all a very healthy, good conversation that we're having and and good to be growth minded, working on all this stuff. A handful of gummy bears after a crazy session like that every now and then isn't also the worst. Thing oh, ever I'm so too. glad you said that. Mm-hmm. You're, you, you, so you're, have have also, you look like you're fit and yeah, pretty damn healthy. Yeah, so you're, 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 it's not that big of a deal. Yeah. So also have some compassion for yourself that, hey, you know what? You just fucking went through the ringer with these people <laughs> and probably brought up a bunch of your shit. Yeah. And that, that gummy bear, I mean, it's definitely better than the menthol. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Not so, smoking right. menthol, I was just <laughs> so, thinking. Yeah. so it's not, it, it, I mean, I would be more concerned that if this is something that leads to this like spiraling down like you have a gummy bear and then after that you decide to go eat binging, fast food yeah. and then you slap on the ice cream That's for dessert right. and yeah. so then I'd be like okay let's let's see where the root cause is what's triggering it and how that's leading you down that path but yeah. you look pretty healthy and fit to me and you know what sometimes I'm so glad you said that yeah. Adam that yeah, is 100% so. you know like if you really want to do this and it really bothers you what we said earlier but if you if you think you're being a little too hard on yourself that hey, look, that might be the. Let me ask you this: If you were your own patient, <laughs> what would you say to them? Um, I bet you would say something like what Adam just said, wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah, for sure. And I I get told quite often that I'm too hard on myself, and and wow. I don't give myself the compassion that I freely give to others. So wow, Adam hit the nail on the head. Oh, then. Man, there you go. go, Adam. <laughs> enjoy enjoy your gummy bears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. It's just good everywhere. to know that there's not something I need to be watching out for nutritionally. No. Um, so that'll help me be a little easier on myself. Well, yeah, you're, you're good. You're doing great. Thanks, Candace. Candace. Thank you. Appreciate it. Damn, I'm glad you said that after. That's yeah. the, that was it right there. That well, was you know, I was I, like, I'm looking at her. I can tell she's in good shape. You know, 42 yeah, years old. Yeah. I know what. The, I mean, and I'm like, handful of gummy bears. I mean, yeah. let's be honest. Looks that's not the, a bad behavior. But that's not really even. That's not even that minuscule, many, many yeah. calories. She's low carb Bro, heading into it. I, I mean, God, I, there's fucking doctors that recommend you do gummy bears for workouts. I, you know what I'm yeah, saying? There, so, are, so, there is. So there's a literal <laughs> doctor. Yeah, this is so let's absolutely be, true. Yeah, so right I used to train. No joke. I used to train a doctor. He was a cancer doctor. His job was so stressful. Obviously, you're telling people they're going to die and all that stuff. It was so stressful. He smoked cigarettes. Yeah, and yeah. he chain smoked. And he told me in in like secret, he's like, don't let you know, this is terrible. But yeah. I, I know I, I work with cancer. He's yeah. like, I smoke because it's the only thing that helps me deal with all the stress or whatever. And I can kind of understand. I'm like, shit, it doesn't make sense yeah. on one hand, but it does on the other hand. So yeah. that's why I said she could smoke. Right. It worked for other people. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> all right, look, if you like the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our health and fitness guides. They're totally free. They cost you $0. Go check it out. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin, the fan favorite, is at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump DeStefano. And Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. 